right, welcome to uh, welcome to the Heavy Breathing Heathens Macabre Cast. This is episode one. Um, Actually, no, this is episode zero one. Yes, because I accidentally messed up whenever I went in to save it. It went, you know, one was already taken. One was already taken because one was. We a didn't fuck get up. we didn't get uh, the uh, copyright uh, to no, to episode one. No, that was just my problem. Oh, okay. All right. I was, I was just saying. Welcome to episode 01. Welcome to episode 01 of uh, the Heavy Breathing Heathens Macabre Cast. Thank you. My name is Casey Ross. I'm one of your hosts, and I have your, my co-host here. His name is... Charlie Man Buns. Charlie Man Buns. No. Of the, of the Chesterfield Man Buns. Ch- Chesterfield Man Buns. Yes. No, this is uh, the wonderful... An amazing Christian heart. The wonderful and uh, self-acclaimed wonderful and amazing Christian heart (coughs) with me here today. If I don't give myself credit, no one will. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's one thing that we can, if there's anything that we could teach anybody out there, is that you are your own worst enemy and you're your own best friend. Exactly. That's right, that's right. You're never going to go anywhere as long as you don't believe in yourself. You must believe. That's right. Clap your hands if you believe. (coughs) Um. All right. So, with uh, the season being upon us, and even though this is our pilot, and usually you have at least a hundred episodes under your belt before you wind up doing a Christmas special, we're gonna wind up doing a uh, holiday special for you today. <laughs> yes, yes, we are doing our Halloween episode right out the gate. You know, what not what what better way to go off and start a macabre cast than to talk about the darkest of nights throughout the year or what some would pe- what some would would classify as the greatest night of the year. We would be Halloween. We're going to be getting into Halloween a little bit. We're going to be getting into some of the old traditions, the old Sam Hain uh as as some of the noobs or the plebes go off and call it or Samhain, <coughs> Samhain. Um we're going to be talking in uh, of more of the uh, creepier side of Halloween. Now, there's not many uh, things that I could really find about ritualistic uh, things, which they are out there. They're just am, not ever uh, on I am new, tape. And, new and fresh to this, uh, this topic because I am a Sam Hain virgin. He is a Sam, a <laughs> Sam Hain virgin, a Samhain virgin, okay? Oh. They don't like it when you say Sam Hain. It looks like Sam Hain. It's spelt like Sam Hain, but it's Samhain. Now, um, the, and they get really mad whenever you say that because it's old Cath, it's old, it's old uh, Gaelic, you know, terms. It's 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 Gaelic. And the thing about Gaelic, and I was just talking to Ro- uh, Rook about this earlier, which uh, he's he's a, a guy that we have guest starring on the podcast as well. He's another character we have uh, that that graces us with amazing stories. But we were talking earlier, and I was telling him that uh, Gaelic seems to be. It's like they took you. You would think with all the um, the things we know about the Celtic religion or the Celtic people that their language would be so fluent and and sound beautiful, like Spanish, like Antonio Banderas, or or some like French, like creme brulee, you know, Michael Bublé, Michael Bublé, <laughs> croissant, yeah, yeah, no, but it's all like Achtung flicken fucking frau, gahog mahon, hard yeah, it's it's all it's it's all it's like if you took the scariest parts and the worst parts of Russian and German and mix it together, you have Gaelic right there. Just the hardest clackinest. It's like it is like what you it's it's like um it's like a white angry um starving Marvin from from uh stuff. South Park. You know, just a bunch of clicks and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, but it's just louder, louder, way louder. <laughs> So, uh, basically, Christian and I have been uh, friends for a very long time. Um, well, for, for a couple years now. Uh, we met whenever we were both working at the same company mm-hmm. as, over, as not over-the-road truck drivers, but local truck drivers. I never made it as uh, far enough to where I should have been, but we still had a lot of good times uh, and a lot of fun we were, stories. We were never good. No, we were never. Gonna, we were. No, fuck no, hell no. We were, we we were just having fun all the time, and that's basically. And it, but if it wasn't for that, this podcast would have never 
have been birthed. We've been uh, t talking about this podcast for a very long time, about doing something that was just um, something that we could have fun with that, uh, and at the same time talk about the things that we were, were interested in. Um, and things that just like aren't necessarily of nor you know it's it, 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 while in the same um in the same sentence being open minded to uh the different different types of views and cultures of the world cuz there's some so much fucked up shit do you know you can go to a market a little side note you know you can go to a market in Africa uh, and it uh, specializes in voodoo and you can just buy dried animal heads voodoo All, yeah yeah hoodoo a hoodoo market you can go to a hoodoo market, and you can fucking um, you can buy like dried <laughs> dried puppy heads and monkey heads. And oh man! Like you could any any head you can think of. You could probably get human head if you asked if you could see a what's in the back. Head. That oh dude, I would I would love to have one of them. Right. You know, but most of them are actually fakes because they were so popular back in the day. Yeah. It was oh yeah, you had a shrunken head, a real shrunken head, man. That stuff that would be fucking. It would be worth so much. And the fucked up thing is, somebody would buy it, and I'm one of those somebodies. <laughs> if I had enough money. Even I would even buy a gaff. I wouldn't even give a fuck, man. I would buy one of the fake ones. Yeah, the ones that are made out of like cow leather and horse yeah. hair. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Just wrapped around a doll's head or something. Yeah, yeah, a doll's head or a monkey yep. skull or whatever. This guy yeah. had a lot. Had huge monkey incisors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh man. Uh, so that's actually, that's actually something we're going to be uh, talking a lot here in a moment. We're we're going to get into uh, one of our segments. And that would be uh, Christian's Tales from the Truck. Tales from the Road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's actually what's one of the one of the cool things about um, having having an over the road trucker um, on this on this podcast is the fact that like there's what a lot of people don't understand is that uh, truckers are kind of like <laughs> the modern day cowboy. They're, uh, th yeah, absolutely. They're like, they're, I mean, like, think about that, man. I mean, back in the day, if you wanted to get beef from one way, from one, one place to another, what did you have to do? You had to fucking move it. Caravan. Exactly. Yeah. I, you know, and we don't have, the, that is the modern day caravanners, man. Yeah. Like if you wanted to be, everybody came over to the wild west. Cause I want to be cowboy. I start out in New York. I make myself over to the tombstones. The wild west. The wild west. See. We go up north. We go up north to the tombstones. And we do the bang bang with the silver <laughs> pistolas. But they were doing that down there too, as a matter of fact. I mean, so really, we didn't really have much of an immigration, what people look at as an immigration issue um, or, a, or a refugee. But they, <laughs> they, they had the, a lot of things that were going on in their own government down there. This is probably something we should edit out. Cause, uh, yeah, you know, like, it, it, it can all be edited. Oh, yeah. But. Um, I actually want to start something off real quick. That's what's that. Um, basically, since this is our first, yeah. Um, I would like to interview you. Okay. Well, not really interview, but more like tell about yourself. You know, because the listeners want to know who we are. They don't want to just. Well, listen I was to some... born to a rather rich family down in Richmond, Virginia. We owned a cotton plantation. Now, uh, along the river of the Shenandoah, uh, along the river of the Shenandoah, which is uh, which was Apache for man who pulls rivers. That was the Shenandoah. The Shenandoah. Oh, the oh. Shenandoah River. Yeah, see, the dialect is a little shaky. My ears, <coughs> my ears aren't quite what they used to be after the war of the the Great War of 65, 60 to sixty five. After that, the plantation kind of went under. <laughs> As father and I had grown accustomed to our lifestyles previously. The poor man died of gangrene later on. He did. He did. <laughs> uh, no, so what do, you, what, do you want to, what do you want to ask, buddy? Well, um, you know, just basically, who are you? What, what aspired you to, to do a podcast? Um... You know, uh, what What steps in your life brought you to where you are right now? You know, um, in, in along the way, just basically tell. Just well, at 13, I was raped uh, by... No. <laughs> um, no. Okay. <laughs> well, this got dark real quick. Well, that um, escalated quickly. Let's see here. Um, well, my mom uh, 
if it wasn't for my, it, it, it's actually, it was all, it was, uh, I'd have to thank my mom for everything on that one because uh, she uh, drugged me kicking and screaming to put an application in at uh, the radio station that's local to this town that we're in right now, uh, KWRE, KFAB. <laughs> and I uh, started working as an intern uh, for them under Steve Casper and Casper Broadcasting um, back in when I was 15. And uh, I was there for three years. And then after that, um, I always had a, uh, I always had a uh, thing for radio. I always, I actually, as a matter of fact, I did this show uh, when I was there that was called When Radio Was. And it was all uh, the, uh, the old timey shows before TV was even around, like, you know, The Shadow and uh, The Lone Ranger and, and, and oh, yeah. uh, uh, Johnny Dalla, you know. Yeah, shit like that, Jack Benny, fucking all, all those great shows, and yeah. I, I would I would be there for like six to seven hours a night, and I'd be <laughs> listening to all these shows, um, the whole time that I was there, and yeah. I, it, that got me into like the old timey radio shows, and uh, this kind of the kind of stuff that we do here. Uh, you guys will, you guys uh, later on down the line, will will hear some skits and stuff that we prepare that are kind of like an old timey radio show. Uh, I'll be the vocalist in the background going. Yeah, making all the white noise. Um, he's going to also shake around a, can, a tin can full of hard beans. Um, Taking a quick break. Just a quick break. <laughs> just a quick break. <sighs> so, uh, <coughs> yeah, that's basically what got me started in um, both in, in radio and in, and in this genre of uh, entertainment. As far as like the uh, the classics, I still watch the uh, old Twilight Zones. Yeah, um, same. Yeah, I was I, when I was researching. That's another thing. When I was researching for uh, for this uh, sh- episode, I kept on getting distracted because I kept on watching the uh, <laughs> first seasons of the the Twilight Zone. It was it was it, like for three nights in a row straight. I wound up doing that. I have actually recently jumped on the Alfred Hitchcock bandwagon. Oh wow, man! The old yeah. Hitchcocks are really fun. Yeah, the old Hitchcock. You know, he uh, he was the one that originally did Norman Bates' Psycho. Yes, he was the writer. Of and that. I will tell or, you. No, maybe I don't know if he was the writer or if he was the producer of that. I just know he was the first one to do it. Yeah, yeah. He um, was the first one to make the movie. But I can say this: the guy is not only is he just one of the most brilliant minds. Of anybody's time for mystery and stuff like that. He's one of the funniest people oh, I yeah. have ever seen on TV. Oh, yeah, man. I've I, just the, the, the music, the theme music for his show, whenever he's just his silhouette stands in front of the mirror or the, the window. And the <laughs> like, yeah. I feel like that's me when I walk after I <coughs> go to China House Buffet. Yeah. Or something like that. Have a big dinner. I'm just Golden like, Corral. Yeah, go, yeah, you leave Golden Corral full of pot and brisket. Not a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Not a sponsor of, of the Heavy Breathing Heathens Macabre yeah. cast. They um, should be. They should they be. They should be. Because <laughs> in all honesty, I would love me some free Golden Corral. Oh, yeah. Golden Corral. Golden Hear that Corral. dinner bell. Come on up to the slop trough at Golden Corral. <laughs> the slop trough. <laughs> we yeah. have a chocolate fountain. You can put anything in there. You can put Rice crisp Treats in there. You can put brisket. You can t- Corn on the cup. You never had chocolate cup, corn on a cup. Come on down, Golden Corral. <laughs> yeah. Get you a fried drumstick. Get you a fried fountain. drumstick. Chalk cup fried drumstick. Stick it it ain't in called there. the chocolate wonderfall for nothing. <laughs> Only two casualties. Uh, two fatal fatalities since the uh, the chocolate fountain has been uh, installed. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Augustus Gloop, arrest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> he was only... Could you imagine that? Augustus Gloop to... Uh, you know, after the tragedy that... He went through at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, yeah. almost drowning in the Chocolate River. I'm telling you. And you got to think that that's like that's got to be like at least twenty percent feces. Uh, and then like, <laughs> I mean, like if we if we have if we have that problem with our own tap water, what's going on in the Chocolate River? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what you got to think about, though. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, well, I, there is actually no correction to anything. It's just a, a question that I have. Did they ever tie it in in the end of the movie or any time, whether it was, I, I don't know, 
what happened to those kids? Did were, were they alive? Um, I would, I you know, they never really get into that, and I didn't read the book. They all they just say that they go off like like a violet goes off for squeezing because otherwise she'll pop. Yeah, you know, Augustus Glue. They were like, uh, "Oh, that tube leads to the marshmallow room, or whatever." I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, the only question that I have is, this is this is a very good question for another podcast, but this is one that I have right now. Another episode, or yeah, another episode. Yeah. Um. Do you know how? This is kind of like a left field thing, kind of just tied in with it. You know how um, they brought up the thing about the Death Star. Getting destroyed mm -hmm. and everything like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. What? Anakin Skywalker is Darth Vader. Spoiler You're alert. You're fucking shit. Spoiler me. alert. <laughs> but Luke Skywalker destroys the Death Star. Correct? Okay, so wait. So you're saying... So who's Luke? Luke Skywalker is Anakin Skywalker's son, which is... Luke, I'm your father, you know? But he's just a kid. <coughs> Anakin turns into Darth Vader. Oh, no way. Yeah. Oh, cool. So Anakin turns into Darth Vader. That's crazy. W grows up to be Darth Vader, which in turn, you know, bangs it out with, oh, uh, Padme or whatever her name is. Has a baby. She dies, and then the baby is Luke. But apparently there was twins or something. Uh, okay. I, I don't remember exactly. It'd be crazy if those twins would kiss. Yeah, right. Yeah, I thought that's about that. That's exactly what that. they did. What? Yes. Spoiler wow. alert. No way. We need to put a warning at the beginning of I'm this I'm never going to have to watch this movie now. Anyway. I already know all these things. So, <laughs> so Luke Skywalker destroys the Death Star. Okay. And what people wanted to know is you have the Imperial Republic. for they got the Sith. Okay. All right. This, the, Darth Vader controls the Sith. Yeah. But who built the Death Star? All that entire construction crew who built the Death Star. The, the stormtroopers didn't do it. Oh, man. The, they had Imperial contractors is who built the Death Star. <laughs> so when so the Death the workers... Star destroyed, Luke Skywalker just annihilated millions. Wow. Because it's a planet size, you know? Yeah. It it's <clears throat> destroys planets. Oh, man. So Luke Skywalker kills all these Imperial contractors. All right. Now, and then everybody's you know what, like, man, you know, let me what tell kind you of family? If you threw a couple people in, in tiny bear suits in there, this would make a great um, made for TV movie. I don't see it really yes. being big, big blockbuster or Hollywood video. Yeah, I could definitely see this. Netflix. Being a, uh, Netflix would pick Netflix. it up in a heartbeat. Now, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're about to have another spoiler oh, alert. Man. But anyway, so Luke Skywalker destroys the Death Star, kills all these hundreds of thousands, possibly millions, of these Imperial contractors who built the Death Star. So then everybody thinks, what kind of lawsuit do their family members have? That would. Well, none at all, because it's a rebel. Um, it's, no, no, no. It's a rebel faction. They would no, not be able to have a lot. Oh, towards the towards the, the Sith is the Imperial. Oh, so you're talking about what would what kind of uh what what kind of like uh, would they be what would they be entitled to? Exactly, lawsuits from kind of, family members. I don't know, man. There's not many people that really win lawsuits <coughs> against police. So well, you know, well, it's like this: like if you have an accident at work and you get killed. Yeah, my family would probably be entitled to something. Exactly, yeah. and they would get something. That that happens all the time. Maybe. What makes you think this whole asbestos and asbestos. For, from people working and stuff from like that? From formaldehyde. Yeah, exactly. From formaldehyde. You know? It's unfathomable what yeah. formaldehyde. See, families nowadays are getting giant kickbacks from Monsanto for uh, getting cancer from chemicals. Speaking of which, keep like Monsanto out of your marijuana. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't let them. Let me tell you this, man. When was the last time you seen a, a tobacco seed, man? You know, we made that shit. We make that shit fucking go like, you know, it 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 goes off like fucking wildfire. Everybody's fucking using it. And then everybody takes the only way that you can get a hold of it, man. When's the last time you seen a tobacco seed, man? Hey, kids. When's the last time you're going to see a fucking pot seed, dude? Anytime you come across a pot seed, you put that shit away. Because that way you don't let the man... Get control of your weed. Heirloom. <laughs> Grow it. And, <laughs> yes. Anyway, 
Um, yeah. Say no to Monsantuana. Say no to Monsantuana. Okay. So, <clears throat> basically, you know, people are getting kickbacks from Monsantuana. Vote yes for Amendment 2 if you, if you live in uh, Missouri. Yep. Um, so, people are getting kickbacks from Monsanto and stuff. Just family members. Family members from, from like, grandfathers. And great we're not grandfathers. talking about Halloween. We're just talking about a random I, I know. Shit. Yeah, but this is this is good. <laughs> just, you know, tossing it. For the for the buckets. Yeah. yeah. We could keep these. We could keep these for later, yeah. for later days. This is the, the secret files. The secret files. But, um. Come see the heavy breathing heathens. Macabre cast X Files. X Files. That's right. Is that a mole or is that a chocolate chip? I don't know. But the doctor's gonna tell me because I'm gonna be too afraid to touch it till I get there. Could be a drop of dumpling. Could be cancer, mm-hmm. man. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? So basically, back to the Death Star. So why are we talking about Star well, Wars? It, it, we'll, why are we talking talk about Trek Wars? So we'll get we'll get back to what I was talking to in the beginning. Uh, about Willy Wonka, so everybody Disney owns that dude. We can't even talk about them anymore. But see, Disney owns Willy Wonka and Star Wars. So we can't. So let's. We have to edit everything out. Welcome to the Heavy Breathing Heathens of a Comcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all, basically, all that I'm asking that whole thing, the whole spiel, is that there was a huge. Are you trying to fish for uh, fish for an audition? No. Do you want to be uh what what is that guy's name? The the chunky guy that was in the what that that helped blow up the Death Star. Oh, what was um, his name? Uh, Borks? No. Borkins? So, something like that. There's something Porkins. People, say, I think it was people Porkins. say that I look like him. Dude. With the yeah, beard and I everything. I saw the the ads that they did for it when they were all like holding the lightsabers and shit. They showed him with a fucking giant subway sandwich. And I was just like, <laughs> that is fucking that's unbelievable. <laughs> So oh, basically, you know, talking about the whole contractors getting kickbacks, what would the family assume the, the Republic for? Or not the Republic, but the Imperial for? What would they assume for? Here's my question. Um, these kids that go into, you know, Augustus Gloop gets sucked in a stinking chocolate fountain. Oh, yeah. Oh, gets yeah. stuck in there. Why do you think at the end of the fucking, why do you think at the end of the movie, you know, this is what I think it was. I, I know where you're getting They all from. had to sign waivers. Well, yeah, they all, they all had to, yeah, you're right. They all did have to sign waivers. I was going to say, because, like, if not, if they were able to, if they were able to find a loophole to get out of those fucking waivers, <laughs> like, no wonder at the end he was all like, oh, fuck, I didn't expect any of this shit to fucking happen. <laughs> yeah, right. He's just high as fuck, man. And he's just like, oh, shit. I just killed oh, the kids. Right, oh, God. I just, I just killed all these kids. Okay, well, there's one left standing. I'm going to sign everything over to you right this moment. <laughs> Notice. <laughs> yeah. No one really thought about that because this is nothing you got to think about. Okay. The moment. You think the- living in a house with four old fucking <laughs> dusty farts in a bed is going to fucking be bad enough. Wait until you ain't even going to have a pot to piss in Dude, by the time what, these kids are done what, with old fucking Willie. What you have to understand, or Charlie. Though, is think about this. Willie's going to be in fucking Bora Bora banging fucking <laughs> prepubescent boys. <laughs> think about how irresponsible it was that you got a fat kid who probably can't even wipe properly fall into the chocolate pit, and guess what? Did they shut it down? They did not. They did not. They did not. Oh there was God. no quality you know, control and, there. And, and, uh, it was Caddyshack, terrible. all they had to do was throw a Snickers in the fucking pool, and they shut that sucker exactly. down. Exactly. You know? So you got a fat kid with sweat and ass and, and dick cheese and everything just floating around. You got your some rich fountain. bitch falling all over the fucking golden <laughs> eggs. Or no, she was a bad egg. They, yeah, they she was in. a bad egg. But see, yeah. here's, the biggest, here's the biggest thing. Okay. Not only are you poisoning everybody who you're producing that chocolate to, Here's the my, my biggest thing because you got the fat kid falls in there yeah so what he gets turned into we a just marshmallow call it Bavarian 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 yeah. chocolate limited time only you hose that guy off you you clean him up no big deal the the chick with the golden egg you know she she falls down into a shoot you go pull her out of the stinking inferno or whatever yeah, before v- before violet, she dies violet, you know you just squeeze her until but see that's the question okay being a big guy. And who has fluctuated with his weight so much. Think about the permanent scarring of stretch marks oh, she has stre- oh, now. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, they, remember when Fat Bastard lost all his weight? He had all that flabby skin and shit. Exactly. She probably looked like that old guy that took the colloidal silver and his skin turned blue. Yeah. What if they couldn't get her skin to turn back? My question is, where did they juice her from? Oh, now they're children, man. We can't talk about that. We can't talk about that. 
Well, was we, it were, lapar- we already did talk about that. Was it laparoscopically through the- <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> We here at the Heavy Breathing Keith Heathens podcast uh, would like Dude, to that's how we you. need to start the podcast. <laughs> it's just going... <sighs> 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 Oh God! I shouldn't have ate all that. I shouldn't just have just like that second like some bluegrass, wheel. Of, bluegrass have, going to that ground. Shouldn't ate that second wheel of cheese. <laughs> God, why are there so many stairs to get up here? And these oh, popcorn and diet is, coke stacked. Give me four fried chickens and a diet coke. <laughs> I need six cc's of bacon grease stacked. Oh my God! <laughs> I just give me a funnel. Man, you know what? The other day, um, I, had, I had one beer. I had one beer in the uh, in the fridge, and I just like said "fuck it," and I went off and I grabbed the funnel. Like kids were asleep and everything, and I just hit and I just fucking grabbed the funnel, stuck the funnel in my mouth, and just. Blah, 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 and blah, blah. I was like, for there for a moment, like I wasn't keeping up with it, and I haven't done it in years. Years. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. I'm an old man now, you know, and I'm just like, I can't fucking do this kind of dumb shit. And there was a moment there that I'm just like, oh my god, my head is starting to seize up. Mom's getting a big brain freeze. I'm like, this is the way I go. Really, bro? You have your I'm phone so, on? You have your I'm phone so on sorry. loud? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Here, we're gonna take a caller. We're gonna take a caller. We're gonna take a caller. Hello, sweetheart. Hey, you are on the podcast. Welcome to you the Heavy Breathing right Heathens now. Macabre Cast. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You are our hundredth and one caller. You are our hundredth and first caller. What do I win? You win free tickets to see Creed. <laughs> Creed coming with Nickelback Share. and Cher. <laughs> Okay, babe. I got drama. <clears throat> you got drama? Oh, like shit. Drama. Whole lot of drama in the LBC. Okay. All right. Well, I will talk to you later. I will call you back as soon as we're done. Okay, babe. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. We are back. Anyhow. <laughs> where were we? I don't even remember. So, Porkins... Uh, was... No, you're going back to Star Wars. We oh, done... Okay, oh yeah, man. You know, I swear to God, it sounds like a good. Uh, they just need some CGI. Yeah. Uh, some some kind of crazy jackass with weird eyes that just says weird things. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, me so sorry. <laughs> now, uh, I did a little bit of research, not nearly as much as I uh, as I wanted to. Uh, that I wanted to get into, but if we've been doing this for a while, I mean, there's going to be if we're, we're obviously going to be around. Uh, at Halloween next year, so we still have uh, stuff to do next year. So yes. just, I really want to get in Dia de los Muertos. I, mean, I, I don't know if I'm saying that right. The Day of the Dead. Insalada pica Insalada mucho. mucho. I got some. Uh, I got some very spicy salad today. Yeah, um, yeah. So what? Stra- <laughs> what? What strain? Uh, I have no idea. I think this is. Uh, I think this is Alaskan Thunderfuck. I'm not sure. Anyhow, to break the silence. This will be for the Patreon. This, this, po- the this, Patreon. this, this podcast this is podcast. brought to you by... Alaskan Thunderfuck. <laughs> when you are this... looking to get as high as the peaks in the Alaskan mountains... Yeah, and part. get fucked by thunder. Thunder. <laughs> thunder. Anyhow, um, so... Today, uh, we're going to be bringing you a few different topics. Uh, we have... A special guest on the podcast that'll probably be a uh, reoccurring guest that we were hoping uh, that that will be a reoccurring guest. Uh, and rookery, r- rookery thaws, and uh, um, he is going to be talking to about a few uh, few good old tales of of Hallow's Eve yo law I back from days of yore. I personally cannot say that I know Rook that well. I know him. You remember him? We got. Um, f- I well, I got <laughs> ferged up. You you were chill at the cast party when we were yeah I, I I got a little buzzed but uh, I got real buzzed I I did more mingling yeah I was a, with uh, <laughs> with the who else is single uh, and here to mingle exactly right. exactly but no I came I mean, here for two reasons eat some <coughs> fried pickles and get some tang. And I don't see no tang, so <laughs> show me the pickles. No, no um, I don't have any astronaut drinks, so yeah. let me get them pickles. No, I, uh, <laughs> no, I was mingling, but no, I, uh, I met Rook, and uh, 
he was a super super cool guy um this guy this guy i mean uh, the thing is is like you don't you don't even have to do anything when he's around if you like you almost have to stop him because it's just like man you know we're getting we're, you're getting real deep into this topic and i'm like i haven't said it and so many times i'm just sitting here i'm like all i'm doing is laughing and saying yeah yeah, you know, and I'm just like I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. It's just he, he's entertaining enough to where like if somebody seriously just needs to follow him around all day. If he was a fighter, he would be Rookery the Entertainer. Oh, Thor mm. Hunter. Fucking um, he's actually a really old friend of mine, and uh, when I when I was first thinking about doing this uh, uh, podcast. Or like this this type of one, I was thinking. I'm like, who else <coughs> do I know that would be able to uh, just just fucking rant on, rave on uh, about things that were just weird, um, and enjoy it as much as as much as I would, or as much as my friend Christian would. And that was the first person I could think of. With me being your friend Christian. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Why? Well, I'd assume that you would assume that. Yes. But you know yeah. what happens when you assume, right? Make an ass out of you and me. No, you make an ass out of you, and then there's just me, and I'm awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. you're right. That's right. <coughs> that's the old. That's the old Celtic term, <laughs> which we're going to be getting into more Celtic terms here in a moment with Rookery. In a Mormon. In in the Mormon. In the Mormon. Here in the Mormon. Uh, no, in a moment with Rookery Toljande. Um, <coughs> we also are going to. I want to. Into, it was it was a really fun time, man. I wish you were here. Uh, the only bad thing is is that we didn't have our system completely set up at the time. Yeah. So uh, the sound quality isn't as good as what we were hoping for. We had to do it uh, literally with an app on a yeah. phone. <laughs> but we're we're yeah. Uh, I uh, that would be my fault. Um, vehicle problems, and I was way far. Well, not way far out of state, but I was a couple hours out of state, and. Um, Basically, you know, I had all the equipment with me, um, so you can <coughs> blame me on the quality, but um, I have every bit of faith in Casey that it was a good interview. And, oh, absolutely, and, man. And hopefully, hopefully the content will outweigh the quality of the sound, so <coughs> just, uh, um, you know, that, that since we have everything up and going now, and it seems like the quality is very nice. As, uh, from oh, from oh, what yeah. I'm it's, hearing, oh, it's fantastic. Um, you can you can at least you can you can understand what's going on. Yes, as we talk about uh, our this, book review as well of uh, Flaming Zeppelins, Fla a nice t story yes. about uh, Ned the Talking Seal. <laughs> yes, um, oddly enough, Ned the Talking Seal had a beard. I no, he didn't have a beard, but he did have opposable thumbs. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> That's what it was. That's what it was. When I first heard about it, I, well, I saw thought of because like uh, seals are basically just gelatinous, um, like fish dogs. And when I heard of these opposable thumbs, I'm just thinking of these things that just wiggle, fucking crazily, like little <laughs> wacky inflatable arm flailing tube men on your hands, yes, or on their flippers. But apparently, I was wrong. Very <laughs> wrong. So we'll be getting to that in the moment. But right now. We wanted to get in a little bit of uh, of Halloween. Halloween. For tis the season mm -hmm. to be spooky. Halloween. Yeah, that's right. I was working in my lab late one night. Oh. You know what's crazy? We, we finish, finish each, each other's, other's sandwiches. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't say that word. I can't say that word. <laughs> No. All right. So anyway, uh, what is flying and around your one, head? we're coming back in at one, two, three. All right. So tis the season to be spooky. Spooky. And uh, we have a few different things that we wanted to talk today about. Um, <coughs> the uh, we actually have been doing uh, Halloween for a long time, but a lot of people in the uh, generations now don't really understand. That uh, Halloween is less than a hundred years old. Uh, yeah, least and I am America. actually, I am actually one of those people that, me being twenty-seven years old, um, I have only done Halloween once in my life. Oh, really? That's it. Yes, my family, we did not celebrate Halloween. It was frowned upon. Oh yeah. Um, the one time that I ever did Halloween, you know, I well, I take that back. I did it two or three times because whenever I, you know, left the house. 
you know, I jumped out of the nest. Um, you know, I went to a couple parties with friends, you know, and just, you know, lived it up there for about two years in a row, but that's it. Um, <clears throat> as a child, I never did trick or treating or carving pumpkins or anything like, like nothing affiliated with Halloween at all. The closest thing we got was our church had fall festivals. We would oh, have yeah. hay rides and concerts and candy and, and food and all that stuff, but it was not affiliated with Halloween. Um, <clears throat> the only time as a kid that I got to do Halloween was whenever my family moved out of Arkansas. Um, we moved the day after Halloween and, uh, I was 16 years old or no, I take that back. I was 15 years old and all my friends were like, you know, Hey man, we're going to go do some trick or treating, man. We're going to go, go, um, take our pillowcases and, and go get candy and stuff. And, you know, we're, we're just going to goof around, you know, think, you know, cause yeah, we're a little old at 15 years old to go trick or treat right. and stuff, but your parents were just like, as long as you wear your helmet, <laughs> well, you wear your helmet, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah, no, so, you know, my the friends are like... The reflectors on it. They're like, you know, well, I mean, we didn't really have money when we were that old, you know? So we're like, dude, we want some candy, and we're going to capitalize on this. So right. let's go get some get some candy. And plus, I was, you know, it was the last night in town to hang out with my friends. I'm like, heck yeah, I want to do it. So everybody's dressed up, okay? You got a bunch of 15-year-old boys dressed up running around town. And you have one kid that has never done Halloween a day in his life. So you're dealing with me and, and, and all my friends showed up at the house. They're like, come on, man. Witches and demons. Yeah. Well, no, they're, they're all, you know, like one guy was, I'm Buzz Lightyear. (laughs) Yeah. My buddy, Matt, you're supposed to be, I'm a baked potato. He was (laughs) my buddy, Matt and Joseph. They were Batman and Robin. Um, there was a couple other guys. Who are you? Who are you devil bat? Did and you know I, who Batman was? I did. Or were you that sheltered? No, I was not that. No. I wasn't that sheltered. You know, I got my. Did you have to wear suspenders stuff. in your order? No. No. However, what I dressed up for that Halloween was wildly racist, and I what did was that? not know. What well, was that? here's the thing: that year, uh, I want to say two months prior to Halloween, you came across your grandfather's SS uniform. My, no, <laughs> worse. My sister had just came back from a mission trip to Mexico. So okay. she brought me back a giant poncho and a sombrero, and I put on orange tan and went as a Mexican. That's not that bad. A straight, no, 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 that's no. That's not that bad. A straight up Mexican. That's that's not that bad. I can understand. I, I, you probably looked like the bad guy from the old black and white Zorros. Okay. You know well, I mean, the yeah. dude with the tiny little mus- mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh damn you Zoro! I will get you Zoro. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's what it was. So that's you know, being as somebody who's who's you know now at this day and age, you know how I am, and you know I'm not going to yeah. withhold that from my my daughter. Right, um, I understand. You know, I'm, well, I mean, like it's it's, it's kind of became like a more of American pastime and stuff like yes. that. But it it has uh, it has uh, always had a, a strong being. It actually started as a uh, Celtic holiday called Samhain that mm-hmm. we were speaking about earlier. Um, and basically the, the different things about, uh, about Samhain had a lot of different, uh, different uh, things, but to the, uh, the uh, Wiccan or pagan um, calendar, it's their, actually their new years. Yeah. Uh, so this is when they would, cause this is right before winter. This is whenever they would, it's the end of harvest. This is when they would uh, do butchering time for winter um, so like if you, they would, they would, they would like, it was, I guess they would, they would kill most of their f- uh, livestock at this time. Yeah. Blood harvest. You know, I, <laughs> I can see that would be probably where they get the scary stories from, but like, uh, it's back then it was just normal. It was just processing, you know, but I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about the story and I'm sure that we're going <laughs> to hear from fans and, or people that listen yep. at least that, uh, the stuff that we're wrong about. Cause you know, we, you know, people love to talk. Um, <laughs> people love but, to talk. Uh, also, what, what a friend of mine told me is that it was, <laughs> it was a time that they would cast white magic as a means to help uh, achieve your wish to come true for the next year. Like, if you wanted a heavier crop, or if you wanted uh, to find love in life, or something like that. It was kind of like almost like a New Year's resolution. So really, it's not different. It's not too different from the things that we do. Uh, at New Year's, I mean, kind of in a way. I mean, like we don't have to 
harvest or, or, or wait for harvest for our food to come. Yeah. Um, but that was one of the things that I that I had found out about. Um, I didn't I wasn't able to uh, do a lot about it. Uh, but the thought that that makes uh, pagan or paganism or uh, Wiccan so attracting to me is the thought that you can have. They, they believe that you can have more control over a situation or a life or, or life in general. Yep. Uh, than what you normally feel or do. You know, it, it gives you a little bit more. It gives you a little bit more uh, confidence. <laughs> you know, yep. about I feel like it gives people more confidence in it, which allows them to be a little bit more ca- uh, charismatic about situations. Yeah, you know, and they'll go through and be all like, "I'm butchering this goat, so that way I can go up and talk uh, to uh, to Meredith, who lives up the street. You know, she's got the big old bosoms and the, and the pale pale skin, just like milk." They probably didn't talk like that. It was more like Meredith up the street. She's got the big arse. <laughs> I just love to slam my mutton in her bologna cavern. But they didn't have bologna back then. So they'd probably be like, I've slammed my mutton into her fucking mutton. Just a whole bunch of mutton slamming together. Yeah, it sounds a little bit like this. Sl- slamming the mutton. We're going to slam the mutton tonight. Sl- slamming the mutton. And I'm going to kill this here to go. Sir, I can slam that mutton probably by, uh, we'll say, uh, uh, probably the Fertility Festival Slam- by next Equinox. Slamming the mutton into the mutton. That's holster. right, that's right. So, uh, die, Mr. Go. <laughs> no, uh, yo, actually, you know, that's probably. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the uh, delicious sound of a uh, a a blade as sharp as the devil's dick. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, slicing through. Because we all know the, the devil's uh, dick is mighty, is mighty, mighty sharp. Mighty sharp. Um, and uh, it's sharp enough to slice through all sixteen ventricles of an, of a goat's neck. <laughs> yes, yeah, for Samhain. Yeah. <laughs> happy Samhain, everybody. Uh, happy Samhain, everybody. <laughs> From us to you, here at the Heavy Breathing Heathens Podcast. KWYR, the queer. The queer radio. <laughs> we talk about all things queer. We talk about the mysterious, the macabre, the uh, out of place. And we also talk about a lot of sucking each other's dicks. Yeah, and... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, next on the itinerary, let's see here. Um, but, yeah... Um, and I and, and Rook explains this a lot later too in the interview is that the, the reason why it was so hard to find those uh, stories that we were looking at that we've all heard of that was like you know that gives any kind of light to like the blood orgies and the fucking oh, the yeah. human sacrifice and stuff it's because it stuff happens it's nice. just that people aren't talking about that shit yeah <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah hey me and Phil last night we were at the good old uh, we were at the good old fucking uh, cow sacrifice. Down at the St. Louis, and uh, so I was, I was plugging Phil hard in the ass, and fucking, um, yeah, and it was a good night, yeah. Plugging him hard in the yeah. ass, huh? So say hi to your husband Phil for me. <laughs> <laughs> see you later, Louise. Yeah, see you at church. <laughs> see you at church, Charlene. Yeah, you gonna bring that? Uh, you gonna bring that tuna casserole? Nah. Hug your kids for me. <laughs> right, right, right. Didn't tell tell your husband I said hi. <laughs> and if you have ever had a uh, Taco Bell burrito sit out for a long period, of, pe- long periodically times, um, periodically times, <laughs> the uh, bus that is not a, new. A tiny little Mexican will pop it, out of it, and he'll grant you three wishes. Long periodically times. <laughs> Um, uh, chupacabra. <coughs> so, <coughs> so basically, you know, you have a Taco Bell burrito that sit out for a long time. It basically turns into a femur bone. Yeah. So, oh, so, really? So it might have been my, one of mine. Yeah. No, I've never turned. I've never. I've never thrown out human body parts out of a window. But we will get into that. Um, I've never had body parts to throw out of a window. No. No. I just. I'd assume that you'd probably have to acquire that before you were able to do the prior. Um, or the former. Uh, let's see here. So, um, 
I actually had a, a pretty interesting Halloween. Uh, I've my parents let me do Halloween plenty of times. Uh, one time they had my brother and his friend Chris Kreitz. Um, oh wow, I should have probably said that. You could probably beep that out. I can, <laughs> I can in fact. His and he was a uh, he was a small child uh, man. He was just a really tiny guy. Uh, <laughs> but I was a vampire, and my parent, my brother took me out trick or treating. And um, at this time, I can't remember what we were doing. We were uh, we were uh, went through the old bike path because we were white boys in the suburbs of the uh, mid nineties of uh, of America and in the Midwest here in Missouri. Uh, it was uh, it was a cold night. Uh, I was a vampire, <laughs> and um, uh, we were walking around for a while. I remember at one time some chick. Uh, showed up, <coughs> showed up, and uh, started beef with my brother, and they got into a big argument. And like, I got some chick pushed me into a, um, a like a picket fence, and like they got all into it, and we wound up like dispersing, and then we went home. Well, my brother got so heated, he decided to run to our. Uh... Oh man, I don't know if we can talk about that. Let's just say he got. He got really mad, really un, un unbelievably, like irresponsibly mad, <laughs> and then that's how Casey found out where that that his his father had a gun. Hooray! Um, hooray! Whenever you find out find out scary things about your parents, um, <laughs> surprise weaponry. Right, right, right. Uh, anyway. So, uh, but I actually, uh, I grew up, uh, with a background of civil war reenacting. So I was actually around weaponry a lot growing up, uh, and, and whatnot that it was actually before my, my radio day, my days in radio. Uh, I started my radio days the same time I started my Renaissance fair days. And that's why I met Rookery Throw Jander, which we will be having as a special guest. <coughs> um... A few things that I wanted to get uh, into, since the one of the things that I could think of that would actually be interesting was a couple stories that I was able to find. Uh, what is the spookiest thing that you can think of to happen on Halloween? Sacrificing. Sacrificing? Just random things. Random things, like yes. a half-pound beef potato burrito from Taco Bell. <laughs> I give you to Satan. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> I would taking think... dumps off the freeway overpass. <laughs> I give you turn to Satan. <laughs> uh, splat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. What more spooky than good old fashioned mid? Cue spooky music. <laughs> what could be scarier than smooth jazz? <laughs> the smooth sounds of Kenny G. <laughs> Yeah, I can't do that. Zip it Zip it jazz. <laughs> now, now we're getting into a different kind of Yeah, jazz. okay. Anyway. Uh, uh, but good old fashioned mid. Uh, okay, so we have. Uh, first person we have, speaking of trick or treat, uh, we're going to have some trick or treating going on. A gentleman named Liddell Peoples, Liddell of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, he uh, was accused, or not accused, but he was. Uh, he was um, found guilty of stabbing a woman on his block, uh, Miss Maria Adams, age 49, at her home that was down the street on Winchester Avenue in Chicago on Halloween night back in 2011. Uh, the night after uh, her acquaintance, the uh, Peoples, had noticed a bag of candy had gone missing from his home. Uh, he went down to her house, and their argument had turned into a fight, which ensued... To the point where Peoples had lost his mind and decided to stab Adam several times after uh, he had thrown a or she had thrown a plate at his face, cutting him underneath uh, his right eyebrow or well, above the right. Well, I'm eyebrow. just gonna kind of jump in here. Yeah, go ahead. If um, anybody takes my snicker, 
Oh, I understand. Let alone a whole bag of candy. A whole bag of Snicker <laughs> and Butterfinger <laughs> and the Sugar Daddy. Give us Sugar Daddy. The mil- Milky Way. <laughs> The Three Musketeers. <laughs> mm. You getting wet? I'll stab anybody. <laughs> anybody. I mean, I'm talking, You, if you have a kid, if a child comes up and stakes my snicker, guess what? These hands are rated E for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, my God. Okay, so... Um, Peoples was arrested that night and treated for minor wounds as Adams was, was rushed to the ICU where she died five days later. Oh, my gosh. Five days. Could you imagine that? That is terrible. Oh, my goodness. All right. So. Five days of just, was the snicker worth it? <laughs> was the snicker worth it? Was the snicker? Oh, did she it she so stole it, but did she even get to eat it? Did he find know. it? Did I don't know. I don't, did he we find don't, it? Did he find it? We don't know. We don't, don't know. know. We never get to hear the other side of the story. That's Did she? Was she? Was she in ICU? Was she in bad enough condition to where she wasn't able to give her side of the story? Well, let's just okay. I'm thinking of it one way. Um, what if it was just, underneath the couch cushions the whole time? That's true. But here's the thing, people out there, don't stab somebody because you think they stole your candy. No, that's not the go-to thing. That's no. not the go-to thing. No. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to turn the. If other you're going to stab somebody, do it for a high, high amount of money, not just. You know, yeah, I'm thinking a like dollar at least. Fuck, what, like five hundred bucks? At least, <laughs> at least, not I'll for a, a bitch over five hundred. You know, a dollar twenty-five snicker from Walmart. No, no, at least now a zero a... bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's a different story. The white chocolate. And the All right, so down to Sumter, mm. South Cal- South Carolina, two thousand eight. A gentleman named Quentin Patrick was sitting at home. Now, there's a few things that we need to understand about Quentin Patrick. Quentin Patrick was known for a few different things. Quentin Patrick sounds like a serial killer. Well, Quentin Patrick, well, he's not a serial killer. He's just a very, very dumb drug-using and drug-selling gentleman that likes to, uh, uh, that, that, that enjoys his firearms. Okay? So he's your typical American. He's your typical American. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, a couple Welcome weeks... Welcome to Missouri. Uh Mr. Mr. Patrick had been arrested recently for dealing narcotics and having a, a legal firearm. So basically what happened is he probably got pulled over with drugs and he had a gun on him because that's probably what that's what you get regardless. Um, so also uh, a week before the incident that we're talking about, he'd also or recently uh, before that uh, this had happened, he'd been shot by a rival gang member. <laughs> so, on Halloween night in 2008, Quinn Patrick was sitting at home when there was a ring at the door, when the doorbell rang. So, what do you think Mr. Patrick did when the doorbell rang on this night in question? Who is it? No. What, what do you think the reasonable thing to do on a Halloween night? Oh. On a Halloween night. What do you think is the most reasonable thing okay. to do when, when you hear somebody as at your door? Quentin Patrick was probably high on some kind of drugs. He was high on some drugs. You're correct. You're Bands correct. is, you know, Halloween night. It's time to celebrate, y'all. Right, right. Let's get some Snicker right. and some Butterfinger what's, and an 8-Ball and have a good time. Okay, all right. Okay, and there's Ding Dong. There's a... There's a, there's a Where's my door. motherfucking gun? Well, you're actually 100% right. <laughs> yes. You're absolutely 100% Not right. Not today, Satan. You ain't... <laughs> I bet you, I bet you, oh, God. I bet you, such a fucking... <laughs> I bet you, what oh. happened was, is I bet you this Quentin Patrick read, <laughs> he probably read the exact same article you read prior and thought that bitch was coming to steal his snicker. Well, too bad that that happened... Uh, three years later in the future. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> but hey, as far as we know, Quinn Patrick out? might also <laughs> be a time traveler. I doubt that. Speaking but... of time travel, just a little side note. Uh, <coughs> I think that if time travel does exist, that Hitler had uh, the most the the, the most uh, powerful secret service known to man. Yeah. Because how many people want to go back and destroy Hitler? Or there's got to be a, a decent enough reason for anybody to be like, "Yeah, okay, let's let that happen." Yeah. Uh, all right, back to back to uh, Quentin Patrick. Quentin Patrick 
Bing bong. Where's my gun? He pulled out an AK-47. Good choice of rifle. With extended clip. Magazine. And so, or with, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. My bad. Oh, my God. The letters <laughs> that we're going to get oh, on that. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. God, I, I, I get on to people about that, too. Oh, my God. He emptied the extended magazine through the front door, thinking it was possibly the rival drug dealer that had come and shot him the, the oh. earlier. Earlier. So instead of thinking with logic and knowing what day it is, because he's probably been on some sort of some sort of upper for, for a while. Oh. Um, Did he off time. some children? He offed a children. One children. Oh, one child. One children. children. Uh, one children. Uh, <coughs> He, the poor kid just came up to the door he, thinking he was yeah, going to get some Snickers and, he, and some butterfingers. Eleven butter rounds, eleven rounds uh, had gone into the the child that had died, and uh, the father and older brother were also that that were also there had walked away with injuries. Well, not necessarily walked away, but were treated for injuries. That night, that child's parents set him out to get candy, thinking that they were going to be checking the candy for poison, not knowing and knowing. And, not no, no, not knowing that that kid would be poisoned that night. Lead poison. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ. They never uh, they never they never let you know <coughs> that you possibly could be poisoned by lead without people even coming to the door. Yeah. Now, that's All not, jokes now, that's aside. Actually, the, the funny thing is that's actually not the only no well, that's not the necessarily funny thing. The worst part about this, this isn't the, the first time that a trick or treater has been killed. Nor has somebody been killed by said trick or treater on fucking Halloween. <laughs> oh my God. All jokes aside, you know we here at the uh, HBH house, um, you know we like to make light of the things and, and and laugh about it. But truly, that is a truly devastating thing. Absolutely, this and, is all. This is yeah. all. Um, this is all satire. Yeah, this is all satire, and we're bringing you. It's we're all for you, entertainment, guys. It, it's this is all for entertainment. This is a comedy podcast, and we talk about <laughs> messed up things here. There's a lot of dark humor here. Yes, and, but understand that we do feel for the victims here. Absolutely, we, we do feel for the victims and the people that are 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 for are responsible for these horrible crimes. They, they're they're supposed to be laughed at. Yes, you know when you do something like this, it's I mean, come on, we gotta people gotta understand the difference between right and wrong. Mm. You know, and if you can't laugh at yourself, those of you who are who were laughing at, if you just can't laugh at yourself can while you're staring at? in the mirror in your jail jail cell, you know, your jail who, cell? who can, your yeah your jail cell are you gelling? <laughs> you're gelling like a felon. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> your jelly cell. Oh man, yeah, that's right. Because you're jealous of everybody that's not in that cell. <laughs> that's it. That's right. That's right. Snap, snap, snap. Okay, <laughs> over to John D. White. Ooh. John D. White. Now, this guy, this guy was actually a priest. This gentleman was a priest. And what do you think he did on uh, Halloween, All Hallows' Eve? What are you thinking we were doing here? What he would he be doing on All Hallows' Eve? All Hallows' Eve, he was probably praying. Praying? At his church. Right. You know, lighting candles. Okay. You know, Catholicism type stuff. Catholicism type stuff. Okay. Or praying... On little children. Um, well, well, absolutely. Ab- well, I mean, I, I don't mean to say absolutely. I meant to say actually. Um, uh, you're kind of you're kind of off on this one, man. You were good on the last one, but okay. Uh, he was actually stabbing a woman. Oh, uh, Miss Rebecca Jane you Gay. Know, the Lord's work. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, he was stabbing Miss Rebecca Jane Gay. Uh, well, no, no, no. He wasn't stabbing a woman. No, no, no. He beat her over the head <laughs> with a rubber mallet. He was just like, surprise, bitch, pow! Where the fuck, where the fuck you been on Sunday? Well, pow! Why ain't you paying your tithes? <laughs> That's right. Well, pow! And then he wrapped a fucking zip tie around her neck and choked her out to silence her. That's how he finished the deed. Um, Gay's three-year-old son was home at the time, and after he had been done with this, uh, he got the son dressed and took him for trick or treating, before dropping him off at his father's house. Uh, White then, a year later after his conviction, killed himself in prison on August eighth, two thousand thirteen. Justice was served. Justice. Is it justice? <laughs> Is it justice? Is it ju- do it, do it, do it. You're Christian Bale. Come on, do it. <laughs> Oh, Christian got a good nickname today. Uh, We're going to have to talk about that one. 
I got a good nickname? You got, you got a good nickname today for my wife, as a matter of fact. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. So earlier today, the reason that we had to uh, uh, record uh, Rook, Rook uh, separately was because Christian wasn't uh, here earlier today. And um, so we had to make a rough uh, recording. And my wife at the time was taking a nap. I came downstairs. And I, I went to go grab my cell phone back. And uh, I said, uh, or the, she woke up a little bit. She stretched. She goes, so did Christian Bale come? Or you know, she just looked at me. She goes, uh, so did Christian Bale? I just went, ha, Christian Bale. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you, are, you are now Christian Bale. <laughs> you, you are. You, you, God, I would love to see you. In a, Where are you doing the podcast? <laughs> Where did you say the podcast is? Why won't my car start? <laughs> <laughs> when will you let me be on the podcast? <laughs> Why can't I be a special guest in the podcast? Interview me. <laughs> Can I say that you would be Fat Man? Can we make you a Fat Man costume? Fat Man. One barrel roll through the front yard. <laughs> Somebody open the car door. <laughs> open, the, open the door to the Batmobile for me. Where's the Diet Coke? <laughs> Uh, can you blur the AC for me? <coughs> oh, okay. You gotta let you gotta you gotta lotion the side with lard. Alfred, so I, <laughs> Alfred. Alfred. <laughs> grab my slim fast. <laughs> Just master <Wayne. laughs> Okay, now over to uh, the Jolly Rancher. <laughs> the frozen ones out of the top of the freezer, next to the Snickers. <laughs> So, uh, next on our list, we have Sir Johnny Frank Garrett. Old Johnny Frank Garrett. Johnny Frank and Garrett. Johnny Frank Garrett. I believe this was in Texas. I believe this is the um, Texas one. Let me... Three first names. Three first names? Yeah. He does have three. Oh, wow. Johnny three first names. Frank Garrett. Johnny Frank... You are correct, sir. You're... Johnny Frank Garrett. G- JFG. JFG. Okay. JFK. <laughs> JFK. Uh, oh, God, we should make that documentary. <laughs> JFK was secretly a homosexual. JFK. JFK. Shot in the head by a jealous lover, Lee Harvey Oswald. This <laughs> is by his porn name, John F. Giddin' Me. Yeah. Oh! Yeah. Fall 2019. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Okay, so next we have Mr. Johnny, <laughs> Johnny Frank Jarrett, or JFG. <laughs> he uh, snuck into a convent. Convent. A convent. So he, this guy was growing up. Like, peace be with you, convent. Yes, as, absolutely. Full of, yeah. full of canuns. Canuns. Yeah. Uh, the, the silent K that is in front of nuns yeah. that my, most people don't know about because it doesn't exist. So there was a uh, convent full of canuns. <laughs> And that was across the street. Of Actually, Sir, you uh, say Frank they Garrett's. don't exist, but I bet you in Canada they do. The oh, them crazy Canucks. Them crazy Canuns. Them crazy Canuns. Oh, wow. That's a conundrum. Come on, Hoser. <laughs> That's a conund conundrum. All right. So uh, he snuck into the, the convent mm-hmm. to kill the nuns. Yeah. Or to, or to, oh, yeah. Well, there we go. There we go. He killed the canuns. He killed there the fucking go. nun. That was the whole. That was the whole story you of that one. It. Yeah, you fucking ruined it. You cock sucking canun. Um, he killed Miss Six. Uh, <laughs> Miss T- uh, Tadia Benz, a uh, seventy-six-year-old man, uh, in the Saint Francis convent across the street from his very own home. Oh, yes. And this was in nineteen. Uh, oh God, I for- I don't have it. Forgot to write it down. Yeah. So I guess we'll hear about that one. Well done. All right, so our next one, we're over to Louisiana, Bat- <laughs> Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 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 Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, with <coughs> with a, a man named Rod- Rodney Pierre's. Good Rodney Pierre's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We are from the, uh, the uh, talcum powder Pierre's. Long, pow- long talc and powder fortune, <coughs> but we lost all of it in the floods. This is back in uh, 1992 mm. uh, with our, our uh, unfortunate victim, Mr. Yoshihiro Hattori. 
<laughs> not to be uh, confused with Hotori Hanzo, one of the greatest swords uh, smiths in the world. Hotori. That's right. Hotori Hanzo. Hotori Hanzo. He make the uh, samurai sword for Beatrix Kido. Hotori Hanzo on the Tekken Six. Kira Bira. Uh, all right. Yeah, we're gonna get a note about that. Anyway, <laughs> Kiru Biru. Anyway, uh, he was actually. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, Yoshi Hatori, which was his Yoshi for short, instead of Yoshi Hiro, Yoshi, Yoshi Hatori. He was a Japanese student on a foreign foreign exchange program uh, in Baton Rouge. <laughs> in Baton Rouge. Uh, he was on his way over to a Halloween party. Let me just party say this right up. now. If you're going to be a foreign exchange student from Nagoya, Japan. Watch what you say here, buddy. Then <laughs> why would you go to Baton Rouge? Baton Rouge? Baton Rouge. He probably, because he was like, oh, they, 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 uh. They have they the co- crawfish. They, they co- have the crawfish. They, they had the crawfish. They, uh, they're spicy. Oh, wow. I'll keep on going over to Spanish. Uh, the spicy. Yeah, it is spicy. Uh, is that pico mucho? Um, anyway, he was on his way to a Halloween party, and he wound up knocking on the <laughs> wrong door of Mr. Rodney Piaz. Last... The talk about Piaz. Mm-hmm. Back whenever you lived down here in Baton Rouge, you need to have yourself good talc powder. Keep them nuts from a sogging and a dripping. Let's not forget the last he time has talc powder. the Japanese knocked on the route, wrong door. <laughs> Pearl Harbor. He probably, he probably, no, nah, uh, no. Nah. Anyway, Pearl Harbor. What the fuck? <laughs> I hey, was in Hawaii. Come, come knocking on the wrong door. <laughs> okay, dude. Anyway, anyway. Um, Rodney Piaz, just like uh, our, our Mr. Patrick, decided to answer the door. With violent force by shooting through and fatally shooting Mr. Hattori, Hattori. Uh, thinking that he was a trespasser with criminal intent. Um, but the fucked up thing about it is that he was charged for <coughs> he was charged for manslaughter, right? The verdict was not guilty. What? The verdict was not guilty. Why not? I don't know, man, because it's 1992. <laughs> yeah. You know. And technically, I mean, he technically was trespassing, but I mean, nowadays, I mean, you wouldn't be able to fucking do it. Mm -mm. No. You can't fart on a person without getting a sentence. Oh, no. Now, how many people fucking cry about shit these days? All right. So, uh, over to the afternoon of the 30th of October, (coughs) or what is commonly known as Devil's Night. Uh, we have <laughs> running with the devil. You know, Devil's Night is actually really uh, popular in uh, Detroit, where they where they set a lot of houses on fire. There's a lot of houses on Devil's Night. Uh, it's very popularly known. As a matter of fact, it's so popularly known it was one of the uh, plot points or one of the uh, points around uh, the famous goth loved movie The Crow with Brandon Lee, who died making the movie. Uh, anyway, speaking more about death on Devil's Night. Uh, there was Miss Martha Moxley. Uh, she was actually going out on Mischief Night or Devil's Night uh, to do <coughs> some ding dong ditching and some TPN and whatnot and stuff like that. Uh, well, she was last seen in the backyard of um, the Skeckles house, which I people were, I believe people were across the street from her. Um, she was over at the Skeckles house where where she was last seen kissing with. Uh, with uh, Thomas Skeckle, Michael's brother. Michael was the other Skeckle. Michael Skeckle is the one that we're talking about. Uh, Michael Skeckle was, I guess, uh, a little upset that the things were going on, and he decided to kill Miss Moxley with a three iron golf club. Uh, oh no, it was a broken six iron, a broken six iron golf club. Um, and then she, her body was later found the next day on Halloween. Underneath the tree in her family's backyard. <coughs> uh, they noticed that she had been uh, bludgeoned to death and stabbed with the club. Uh, and she had her underwear and pants both pulled down. However, she was not sexually assaulted. Um, but it originally came out through uh, through Michael Skeckle going off and bragging about the, 
the murder is what actually eventually led to his conviction. Because everybody knows that you will get away. The more you brag about murder, oh yeah, the 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 far the better you'll get away. Oh yeah, just just look at the West Memphis Three. <laughs> exactly. Oh man. So uh, after that, uh, well. I do have one left. I do have one left, but I don't know if I want to get into it. This was about uh, Miss Goldeen Paisa and Joan Rabble. Uh, these girls were uh, the were called the Trick or Treat Murders of 1957. That was the same time that my dad was born. So my father was just a couple months old when this happened. Wow. Um, I don't really want to get into it. There's a lot of stuff that's getting into it, and we're kind of running out of time right now. Uh, but we, uh, I would... I, th I almost feel like we would almost be able to do another episode specifically on these trick or treat murders, which we might cover uh, within the next week or two. Yeah. Depending, uh, we don't know if we're going to be doing a monthly podcast or if we're going to be doing a bi monthly podcast. But uh, what we know is that we're going to be here bringing you guys out the best product whatsoever. And uh, we want to be able to uh, research enough to be able to give you the truth. We don't want to be telling you guys any stories or anything like that. And uh, like those guys, while we always say, like, you know, the fans will tell us. We want you guys to tell us if we're wrong about something. We will come oh, out absolutely. and tell Yeah, we will completely come out and recant what we're we not, say we're if we're prideful. in the wrong. Um, no, not at all. But I do, uh, now I believe this would be a good time to get into uh, the interview that we did earlier today with Rook. Um, Rook is an old friend of mine. He's a, he's a great guy. He's one of the smartest, <coughs> smartest gentlemen that I know. And um, he was a person that I believe that would uh, would really bring a a good flavor to this. And and I, I barely even had to interview this guy. Uh, he's somebody that that you can just go off on a rant, and he just goes a million miles a minute. And it's oh my God, it's it's fantastic, and it's so easy to get to get like you know on so many different topics with this guy because he's just like he knows so much about so much. Um, but just I really hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, we'll be bringing you better quality stuff because we had, again, we had to uh, record this on a phone because um, we didn't have, we were having technical <coughs> difficulties at the time. And we wanted to get this out to you uh, by Halloween yep. um, or at least as close as possible. Yeah, we'll probably so, be able to make that. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Well, we got fingers crossed. Yeah. At least, may, at, at latest, by the last day of Dita de Muertos. Dita de Muertos. De Muertos. And, uh, which would be November 1st. Um, and we were, uh, for our next, uh, episode before we go off and get into, um, this, uh, this next, uh, segment, uh, we were planning on going off and doing the, uh, Mandalay Bay shootings for our next, uh, podcast since, or for our next episode since it's literally a year on, yeah. what was it, November 1st since it happened. And there's so much that's going into that, but I got a really good feeling that there is another podcast that is similar to ours that will possibly be going off and covering the same shit this year. Yeah. And I ain't no goddamn motherfucking Marcus Parks. Exactly. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that whole thing that's still up in the air right now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but we do have a couple good ideas, and we got a couple good episodes coming to you guys in uh, just a few uh, in a few short weeks. Uh, and we love to hear, hear uh, from many of your guys' stuff. Check us out on Facebook at the. Uh, uh, heavy breathing heavens macabre cast and uh, you we hope to hear from you guys soon hope you guys enjoy this and I bring to you Mr. Rookery Thorjack <laughs> So I guess this is Happy Halloween 2018 and uh, oh man so yeah this might be uh, hopefully this will be my last Halloween in town and uh, my life will start to be more about my adventures and my stories and stuff like that. So we're constantly uh, going to be hoping on coming back for you know a little bit of what's going on with Rook. Well, hopefully the stories will get more interesting. Uh, yeah, there was this and, Polynesian uh, man lady. And <laughs> 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 well, and <clears throat> I've been trying to read. I've uh, been trying to branch out in my reading. Uh, uh, to stories that are uh, that come from everywhere, really, and and just sort of have a feel of like, you know, having the great adventure. So, so I'm reading this book. I uh, I I had been to the library. I'm always at the library. I'm always getting books from the library. So I I had picked up the book Bubba Hotep, 
Yeah. Uh, okay, so, because I knew this was a book before it was a Bruce Campbell movie. So I wanted to read the book. So I read the book. It's fabulous. It's just like the movie. And uh, and then it's got a sequel in print. So uh, it, Bubba has, uh, has some further adventures with, uh, I think it's Elvis Presley. Uh, I know... Mark Twain is along there, along in there, and there's a couple other people from 20th century history, and uh, <clears throat> and Elvis and this group are being are are being like their handler is Colonel Parker, the guy who recorded Elvis, you know, the, okay, the, yeah. you know, the guy who managed Elvis. So he takes them around the country and they solve mysteries. And it's sort of like supernatural, but with Elvis and these, these random people from history. So I love this book. So I start getting into this guy's writing. Joe Instead Ar of being like so sexy, though, it's just a bunch of old geriatrics. Well, no, yeah. they're not even old. No, yeah. actually, in, in, uh, in well, I mean, in uh, Bubba Hotep was a while ago. I can't remember how... Uh, the sequel to that, it might have been like a prequel earlier. Oh, okay. Just, I don't know. But, uh, so anyway, uh, this guy Lansdale, Joe R. Lansdale is uh, the guy. And I get into his writing and I find out, I think, I think he's, <clears throat> he might be up to like 20 or 30 years writing now. Uh, but he's got a whole series. It's like a crime noir series about uh, these two guys like an ex-military dude and a private investigator or something and they they're running around the south uh it's sort of like southern gothic crime noir tales about this these two dudes and they uh have adventures and solve crimes or whatever and, and uh <laughs> Uh, it sounded cool, but I'm not really into crime stuff. But That's something I'd like to check out, yeah. My wife would love that, too. But then Lansdale branches off into these occasional novels like Bubba Hotep, where it's some kind of, you know, some kind of pop culture fantasy. And I find this one book of his called... Flaming Zeppelins, The Adventures of Ned the Talking Seal. <laughs> the Adventures you know, of and, Ned the and Talking I'm, Seal. And I'm just sold on the title <laughs> and right out of the gate. And it turns out it's, it's, a, it's a book that is, it's these two short novellas together in one book. Uh, the first one is Zeppelin's West, and I think the second one is called Flaming London. And uh, so it's The Adventures of Ned, who is a talking seal... <laughs> who was created on the island of Dr. Moreau. Right, Dr. Moreau so, being the famous... The famous uh, Jules Verne character, yeah. uh, the subject of the novel uh, by, of the same name. So on the island of Dr. Moreau, Dr. Moreau is, is creating all these human-animal hybrids, and, and uh, uh, this is where some of the coolest monsters come from. And, and along the way, he creates this... He breeds this talking seal, and somehow he he crossbred this seal with I don't know a human or something, and the seal grew these vestigial thumbs on his fingers, you know, <laughs> so he can use tools and he can manipulate things, and and then the seal can write, uh, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe the seal has a like a little board he writes on or something. He like just that. walks around know, with yeah with a, with know, a clipboard and, uh, <laughs> or something, but. Then the seal also has uh, this metal cap that Dr. Moreau stuck on his head, and I guess it it increases his intelligence, maybe, to where he can understand people and he can communicate with people or whatever. Okay. <laughs> so Ned the seal is writing this book, Flaming Zeppelins, about his adventures running around the world with Wild Bill Hickok and Annie Oakley, who are in the midst of a famous romance they're having together because Wild Bill was in the uh, the Wild West show and Annie Oakley was the sharpshooter and she's in the show and it's Buffalo Bill Cody's show and Buffalo Bill Cody for reasons not fully explained has been reduced to a living head in a glass jar <laughs> and they and the the jar can be put on a mechanical body. And inside the body, there's a little 
dwarf or something that's in there running the body, right? Like, Buffalo what? Bill will shout out commands like, raise my arm so I can wave, and the little guy <laughs> will raise the arm on Buffalo Bill's body, right? Oh, and so it's like is, a mech suit for, but it's like, right. it's, it's that's a, like the worst mech suit ever. It's a mech suit for <laughs> Buffalo Bill that a little guy has to run from the inside. What kind of life is that for the little guy? <laughs> well, and they, they do mention in the book that they're working on a play. When they get to the island of Dr. Moreau, Dr. Moreau tells Buffalo Bill that he can grow him a body and stick his head on a body oh again. So, and I think that's never fled, that, that's never followed to its conclusion because I think, well, anyway, uh, it, that doesn't actually happen, but it's something Dr. Moreau talks about. So anyway, Buffalo Bill, Buffalo Bill's head and Wild Bill and Annie Oakley and Sitting Bull, the great chief and warrior, <laughs> they are all in America doing Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, okay? And I, I forget who it is in the novel right now, but somebody comes to alert them that there's a mission they, they're needed for, right? Like, I think it's kind of like the American government or something like that, or somebody important comes to tell them there's this mission that they have to go do. It, it turns out in the novel that Frankenstein's monster is still alive and well in the 1800s, yeah. okay? And he's traveling the world, right? So, like, tra now, are you saying, like, is he, is he traveling the world, at, like, as as part of leisure, or is he... Like, well, I don't know. He's he's having his his adventures, being alive. He's backpacking you know? in Europe. Yeah, I yeah. mean, he's, you know, wherever his adventures take him, I don't know. But apparently, he was somewhere in Europe participating in an ice skating con <coughs> competition. Like, actually ice skating. Frankenstein's himself. monster, ice skating, yes. He was... He was yeah. apparently a talented ice skater. It's wow. <laughs> and somehow the Japanese got wind that he was that of, of that he was there and they kidnapped Frankenstein's monster and took him back to Japan. Right? And so so the monster is in Japan being held prisoner because the Japanese are slowly and systematically grinding up his body for the for the Asian, you know, boner powder oh and, and medicine trade, right? Like cobra juice. And right, <laughs> right. And like tiger blood and right. rhino horn and like, shit like that. Yeah. And they're grinding up Frankenstein's monster, who I kind of enjoyed noticing. Frankenstein's monster is made out of the corpses of people who died in, like, Europe in the 1700s. So <laughs> it's at least 100-year-old corpses that these people are in ingesting, right? Right. And, like, when we were talking about like, this earlier, I mentioned that it was like, it would like, be like us eating Ed Gein's nipple belt. Today, right, right. Today. Or, <laughs> or, you know, uh, you know, like, if you found, if somebody dug up today a, a, an actual golem that was made of, of, Jewish bodies stitched right. together from a concentration camp, <laughs> and you ate that. That, that would be incredible. Okay, so it's yeah, it's a people are uh, the Japanese are grinding up Frankenstein's monster for for the the bogus medicine trade. Jesus, and this traveling group of Wild Bill and Annie Oakley and Sitting Bull, they have to go rescue Frankenstein from the Japanese. Oh my God! And so they they rescue Frankenstein from the Japanese, and in escaping Japan, their airship, their Zeppelin airship, gets shot down, and they hit the ocean and they wash up on the island of Doctor Moreau. Oh, and man. and now they're in his clutches with his whole island populated with you know genetic rejects and right. animals that he's created. It's the island of misfit toys, you know. <laughs> and, 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 and it is. And it is there that Frankenstein's monster meets the Tin Man of Oz, <laughs> who is like Dr. Moreau's personal valet, his major domo in his, his little kingdom. He's like Mr. Belvedere? Right, right. <laughs> and, and the Tin Man of Oz, 
I can't remember how he got to the island. I think they talk about that in the book. But uh, so Frankenstein's monster, the monster who calls himself Bert, B-E-R-T. Can't remember why, but he likes that, <laughs> he likes that name. So Frankenstein's monster has taken the name Bert. All right, that's what he wants to be called. So Bert falls in love with the Tin Man of Oz, like passionately. Like he meets the Tin Man, and the... Bert is this creature that's stitched together from old rotted corpses of humans. And the Tin Man is this, like this archangel who is the perfect life form. His body's indestructible, it's gleaming silver, it's just gorgeous. And so Bert is just crazy in love with this, this creature because he's a made thing, uh, as far as Bert can tell, just like himself. And he, he falls deeply in love with him, and then they have this conversation. This, this has got to be, like, the most amazing conversation I have ever read in print. So, once again, this is, this is being shared as an homage to Joe R. Lansdale. This is great. This is directly from the novel Flaming Zeppelins. And this is, this is the moment when Bert and the Tin Man of Oz, they've been talking and getting to know each other and, and, reveling in their their similarities and their uniqueness and and all of this and 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 then they it is revealed that the tin man apparently has regular sexual urges like <laughs> like the tin man is totally down with being <clears throat> and not necessarily as a male like the tin man as you might expect is is oddly you know, genderless, where he it just doesn't occur to him to care who it is that he gets his his you know his tin jollies with or right, whatever. Right. Yeah, he's he's pretty fluid. Yeah. And and also apparently the Tin Man has been is well versed by this point in his life in exploring his his own erogenous zones and whatever. Right. Oh, okay. okay. I mean he's so, a sentient being. I'm I mean we Right. So so as as Bert, Frankenstein's monster, is clearly fawning over the Tin Man and, and flirting with him and mm -hmm. adoring him, so the Tin Man decides to open up to the monster, okay? So we have this this excerpt here. So Bert carefully removed Tin's vest with its shiny watch chain and turnip watch. And slowly, Tin removed Bert's new clothes, dropped them to the floor. The next moment, they fell in bed together. The room ticked and thundered clocks. There was a problem. Tin didn't have any place for Bert to put the old seesaw. <laughs> Look, said Tin, rubbing Bert's chest. I know it's I know it's unconventional, but I can take care of you, and there is a way you can take care of me. Between my legs there's this loose bolt, and if you touch it with your finger, for I have touched it many times with my own, and you shake it a little, well, it does something to me. The gears and clocks inside of me run faster, seize up, Stop, let go furiously, and I feel warm all over. It is a heavenly experience, and in that moment, when I feel that charge, I feel as if I not only have a soul, but that it can soar. Wow. And Bert replies, In other words, you want me to kind of finger that little bolt there until you get off? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, heavens, yes. That works. Faster, my love. <laughs> so, I, yes, I, I got to is... say, man, I got to say, I'm, I got half a chub, and for some, for some reason, I'm moist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, I seek out weirdness in all its forms. I love weird stuff. And, and I'll tell you, I, I, am, I am very proud that I have actually found 
the first hand job scene ever <laughs> written between Frankenstein's monster and the Tin Man of Oz. That's why I have you on this show. You're man. welcome. I thank you very much. You That's know? why I have you I mean, here. My Halloween was made better just <laughs> because I found this story. Oh so. my goodness! I <laughs> see when you originally uh, when you originally sent me that excerpt, I was just I I like I I have to have him. Uh, we have to talk about this on the show. And uh, I originally thought that it was I didn't think it was a uh, a fantasy or, or a fan fiction. I thought it was a um, Stump, steampunk erotica. I thought the whole. Right. And I'm just. I'm thinking to myself. I'm like, oh my god. I'm, I'm like, uh, uh, you know, the head, of the jar is going to be blowing people and fucking. Oh, like. and it's truly wonderful. Just the way. I don't know why Lansdale would have thought to put those characters together, and and then he somehow comes up with the Frankenstein's monster and and the Tin Man of Oz who. You know uh, the rationale for saying that that thing really exists and <laughs> that it's oh, on man. this island. I mean that's beautiful. It's 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 and, it's, uh, it's 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 uh, it's a new form of originality that I've only seen. I've only seen a few different times. There's another play. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I went with an ex girlfriend to go watch it. and It was amazing, and it was uh, written and um, it was written by Steve Martin, and it's um, Pablo Picasso, Albert Einstein, and Elvis Presley. And they're all in a bar in France drinking absinthe. And they're just talking about basically like the, I, the they're, I, 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 I get it from the whole thing that they're basically like in heaven. And uh, like and they're all meeting up to talk about like their theory of relativity. And Pablo Picasso is always, you know, chasing tail. And like he's got a few ex-girlfriends that wind up coming in the bar with him. But you know, like uh, w one thing I, I notice um and then Elvis Presley just comes in and steals the whole fucking show. <laughs> right, right. And I love, I, I found a couple of authors who put weird characters like that together. There's a guy that that does uh, Edgar Allan Poe as a, uh, a, a, a crime solver. And he, he like mixes Sherlock it up. <laughs> yeah, he mixes it up with, uh, uh, with all sorts of uh, famous personalities. There was a good book about Edgar Allan Poe and P.T. Barnum. <laughs> You know, and uh, oh, that would be cool. There's another guy uh, who does a book series with Mark Twain solving mysteries. Like, as Mark Twain is moving through his actual life, writing his chronicles and his books, he comes upon these mysteries, and he's asked by you know local important people to step in and help solve these mysteries. Oh you know, my these, goodness, man! And it's a lot of fun, and so. Yeah, this book, uh, uh, Flaming Zeppelins, um, uh, once again, Flaming Zeppelins by Joe R. Lansdale. It's a steampunk fantasy. It's kind of like, if you've seen that movie, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. It's That's what I was thinking, Ridiculous yeah. <laughs> adventures with these famous people from life and fiction, you know, and and, uh, and it's a really wild book. It, it, I, I swear to God, there needs to be like, who's that? Who's that director who just got fired by Disney because he was kind of pervy and shit on Twitter? It's the from Guardians of the Galaxy. The oh, John, uh, it's some, John some somebody, gun, uh, something uh, gun. Uh, or gun, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, James Gunn. James Gunn, James Gunn. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like, like James star Gunn name. <laughs> needs to make this friggin' novel a, a movie, dude. I mean, oh, absolutely. James Gunn needs to get a budget. <coughs> and do this flick with just Bruce have, Campbell and just to have that one sex scene, man, that would be perfect. Yeah, man. right. The only, the only sec, the the only thing that I think that would be able to pop, top the uh, most perfect sex scene in my book right now would be the sex scene between the puppets and um, Team America: World Police. You know, I, pup, anytime you can have puppet sex, that's that's uh, actually I, I, I uh, Team America was great, but I did find uh, I did find this DVD once. It was. It was an honest shot puppet porn. Right on. It was, it was called "Let My Puppets Come," and uh, we'll have to we'll have to cover that one on a, on on another podcast. But let's go know. ahead. We'll, we'll we'll get more into it. But you but you said you found this DVD. This well, is an actual DVD. I had it for years, and then the DVD DVD got all fucked up and corrupted. But uh, <laughs> but I I watched a bunch. Angel and Mike will do that. To it DVDs. was. <laughs> uh, I had watched a bunch, and it was. It was literal porn scenes with like 
<coughs> if the Sesame Street characters were fucking living women, you know? And it was oh, a whole God. thing. Like, the puppeteers would do that. Oh, you know, <laughs> and, I mean, they were going to town, dude. And these living women would be sitting there writhing. And, ah, and I'm like, it's just... I, oh, I saw it and I was God. like, that is so ludicrous. I have to own that, man. Sorry, Sarah J. You know, and I, the I, <laughs> I can honestly say it is the only piece of porn that I ever watched and I never even thought about beating off to this. Because I was like, I can't I can't take it seriously long enough to stay hard, dude. I just I just lose it. It reminds me that they they got these famous these porns that are real big now where it's a guy that uh rides around on uh, one of those hoverboards and he's wearing the inflatable um T Rex costume. And he's chasing the girl on the hoverboard and then he does her with a giant strap on while he's still wearing the T-Rex costume. She's like, yeah, do you mean Mr. T-Rex? Right. I watched that one. And I, I think I may have still beat off to it, but I'm not sure. Like, yeah. but <laughs> I can't uh, really remember. Jim, it was you or, it was you or Ashlock that just sent me uh, it was a video clip of a guy driving around some back road on <coughs> some kind of John Deere thing or whatever. But on the back of it, he's got hooked this apparatus. <laughs> where there's this girl suspended on bungee cords in the oh middle of this frame, and she's bouncing up and down on the dildo that's down oh this my hanging God. here. And he's just <laughs> driving around. <you> know, <laughs> I'm like, I would love to have that guy as a neighbor. Right? Oh, wow. Well, that is true. See, I did experience that. I was like, okay, I can drink with this guy. <laughs> But at the same time, too, I just thought of this meme that I saw recently where it said, you know, I don't fucking care that I like vanilla sex and shit like that. <laughs> Not my fault. you got to have mustard up your ass and your leg in <laughs> a bear trap to come. Okay? Oh, Jesus I mean, why don't you fucking relax and just have some sex? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, I can totally follow behind that. <laughs> right, right. So, but you know, this is Halloween, and uh, this is one. Of the, <laughs> That's the, one of the, the things freaks that, are out. Oh yeah. my God! Yeah, this is when it. This is when it really yeah. happens, man. I'll be getting yeah. into. I'll be getting into more stories about that later. That's actually something I was. I was wanting to find. I was easier to find, and that's what's fucked up. I was easier to. It was easier for me to find murder on Halloween and just abstract murder. Um, but it was hard for me to find like stories about orgies and shit. Like fucking like, come on, you, you're not telling me that there's not one group out there that's having an orgy in the St. Louis fucking uh, cemetery in fucking New Orleans somewhere right. and fucking banging it out with fucking Madame Laveau's corpse. You know, writing X's all over the place. That'd be fucking crazy right. to see. But, like, you can't tell me that that kind of stuff's not fucking happening. It's so fucking hard No, for me the to thing is, that like stuff that. happens, but that's the really good Halloween stuff. And, like, <laughs> all the purest things in life, like Native American language, nobody writes that shit down. Right? No, of course you, know, not. you just gotta <laughs> live it. Right? And you can tell other people about it. But you just gotta live that stuff. You and see, know? when I when I try to reach out there and find those stories, I got so many other stories of people just being like, "No, that stuff doesn't happen." That's like, you know, that's more Satanist stuff. And I'm like, well, you know, it, it's not that it doesn't happen. It's not that it doesn't happen. And the reason that I wanted to look for uh, specific, like, you know, Samhain stories and stuff like that was because they were the original creators of, or well, that's basically where our adaptation of Halloween uh, right. came from. Well, and I love, that's that's why Halloween is my favorite holiday, because even today, with everything you could find out about Halloween, you go through its entire history, there is nothing that the church can co-opt about Halloween. Like, they tried like hell. Oh, yeah. Because what they did was, the, the, <coughs> the church established a calendar where October 31st in, or, you know, as, as the date October 31st evolved in the Western Hemisphere here, the church decided that was going to be All Souls Day. Because this day was holy to pagans as Samhain, as the day of renewal, the, the day of the new year, the turning of their year, the Christians came up with this excuse to let that day be holy by saying, 
all souls are holy on this day. Yeah, like all souls day. Like, because or, or Saints Day or something. Yeah. Well, October 31st became all souls day because the next day, November 1st, is all saints day. Oh, okay. So that's where the church steps in and says, okay, but now this morning... Now that you've had your new year, now it's all about the Christian way, and this is all Saints Day, and and it's 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 part of the way that it's one of the many many ways that the church throughout over the centuries co-opted dates and started making pagan dates about Christian stories or right. whatever. So my favorite with Halloween. Uh, this 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 calendar ploy was the only was the closest Christianity could come to trying to subvert Halloween Samhain into something else. Other than the dates, there's nothing that Christians could steal about Halloween. It is right. so unforgivingly pagan. Yeah, absolutely. There is right. there is no <laughs> there is no subservience to. Uh, a god that you have to fear on Samhain. Uh, the only thing you fear are the things that humans have put into the world. The thing you fear are spirits and demons and evils that humans created which come back to haunt us. And you have to dress up and change your appearance so that the bad spirits won't recognize you. And and my, my favorite out of all the weird stories there's always been like food stories you know like we have certain charms uh, or certain superstitions about food and stuff like that and and for a long time in europe tomatoes were like illegal in places what? because tomatoes were seen as this like this fruit of passion or something like what? that and yeah i mean it's it's, it's a whole red. thing you know it's, it's got to be the red thing it's, 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 green it's, tomatoes yeah, are okay. i don't know but, uh, <laughs> you know we've just developed <coughs> some weird food stuff and my favorite was always the jack-o-lantern so it's this whole halloween thing with you know I look at a jack-o'-lantern, and I'm like, it's so friggin' cool, this orange thing, and you put a <laughs> candle in it, and it, it's like, you know, how does this, you know, but Samhain is, is all old and stuff. The jack-o'-lantern seems to me to be like a, a pretty modern thing, because it's just so kitschy and perfect oh, for yeah. Halloween, you oh, know? Yeah. And we've been doing it forever. It's like, you know, so where does this come from? So there's this history of the jack-o'-lantern, and I, I was always interested in this. And I look up this history or, or you know, uh, I don't know. There's all, there's all sorts of sources you got. I think what I've got here is history.com, which is, you know, I know they put that alien guy on TV oh, too. Right, but, right, you yeah. know, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's just <laughs> the history of the jack-o'-lantern, right? So, uh, you know, because I figure it couldn't have just started out this way. You don't just get somebody that says, you know, let's carve a face on this <coughs> pumpkin. Right. You know, and, and and let's just make it scary or whatever. So, you know, there's, there's got to be an evolution here. So there totally is. Now, the one thing that has always been a part of this tradition on Samhain, what we're talking about, of course, is, okay, you take a pumpkin and you, you know, carve a hole in it, you empty it out, put a candle in it, uh, a flame in it and and leave it out on your doorstep for Halloween. So, you know, we're not doing that so that something will come to your house and leave things or whatever. Right. Why? Why on? You know what? What is this little thing about? Right. <clears throat> so the one part of this legend of this tradition that has always remained the same is the name Jack. It's always been called a Jack o' Lantern. Right. Jack of the Lantern. Because and Jack refers specifically to an Irishman, because like all of Irish. the all of oh, the yeah. greatest spookiest <laughs> shit always go back to the weird ass Irish. Because and they're, they're you know, these weird tree people that crawled out of the forest, man. And they were the hey now hey now no 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 no, no, no understand what I'm saying is oh well, I know they we're were fucked. the they were, we're the fucked. people no, the Irish are like. When you talk about the el the elves in Lord of the Rings, or when 
in Game of Thrones, there's like this old race, the children or whatever. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The, this is the Irish, yeah. man. Like these are these people that came from those deep forests, man. And then they crawl out of there and they have all these weird earth beliefs and stuff like that, right? <laughs> so, of course, it's the Irish. It's an Irish legend about a guy named Stingy Jack. Okay, and Stingy Jack was, it says here, Stingy Jack was an Irishman who invited the devil to have a drink with him. Because that's the kind of crap Irish people do, okay? And he was called Stingy Jack for a reason, though. And it turns out Stingy Jack did not want to pay for the drink with the devil. Which you know, says a lot, both good and bad, about yeah, Irish yeah. people. I mean, it's like, it's look, a, that's, uh, that's some brass right there, boyo. Okay? Yeah, I've, I've, I've had, On I've the other hand, <laughs> if the devil's going to sit and have a drink with me, I'll pay for the fucking drink. Okay? Yeah. I mean, I'll buy the devil a drink. But, right. no. Right, you going to stiff Elvis? <laughs> stingy Jack is a stingy motherfucker. So, Stingy doesn't want to pay for the drink. So, he convinces the devil... It's not really specified how you do that. Maybe that's just one of those trade secrets, you know. Maybe that's like, you know, tribute. You never get to hear the actual song, right? You know, you just hear about it happening. Well, Jack somehow convinced the devil to pay for the drink. But once the devil coughs up the coin for the drink, Jack does a little sleight of hand and slips that coin in his pocket. Okay. Because that's the devil's coin. And then... He puts a silver cross in his pocket next to the coin so that the devil can't, <clears throat> so that the devil, uh... oh shit, I'm sorry, okay, that's an edit point right there. You gotta, edit. that's an edit <laughs> no point because I fucked this up. There's a, no there's, there's a detail, okay. So there's this Irishman, Stingy Jack, in this ancient Irish legend. And Stingy is called Stingy because he's a stingy motherfucker, okay? And Absolutely. one night, he sits down with the devil to have a drink. And he convinces the devil, first of all, to stop by his pad or whatever and have a drink with him. But Stingy doesn't want to pay for the drink. So, Stingy convinces the devil to turn himself into a coin to pay for their drink. That's got to be one silver tongue motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, it's not specified how stingy, you know, convinced the devil to do this. And maybe that's just one of those things you learn, like if you're ever sitting with the devil and it just comes to you, you know, whatever. So, <clears throat> stingy convinces the devil to turn himself into a coin that they can use to pay for a drink he's going to have with the devil. I don't know. Right. Irish. How does that... <laughs> Irish. Okay. <laughs> Fucking Irish. Maybe. I don't know. So devil, the devil does this it. This isn't though. the first drink the devil's had that day. Right. <laughs> and you would, you would think that if he went to all the trouble of falling all the way from heaven, <laughs> that the devil would kind of see this one coming. But whatever, man. You know, this is what the Irish say. Okay. So Stingy gets the devil to turn himself into a coin to pay for the drink. And then Stingy swipes up the coin, which is the devil, and puts it in his pocket next to a silver cross. So now the devil can't turn back into, his, into himself. Apparently, they can still talk to each other, though. Apparently, the devil's in there going, Oh, you think I'm a coin? I ain't gonna fuck you up. Because Stingy then makes a deal with the devil and says, I'll free you if you don't bother me for a year, and if I ever die, you will not claim my soul. And the devil's so like, Sure. Because that's where that's going to end, right? Because I'm the fucking devil. But the devil's like, all right, fine. I don't bug you for a year, and I will not take your soul. So, so Stingy Jack lets the devil go, and the devil walks on. So 
the following year when Jack's running out of time and the devil's probably going to come around because, you know, he's been watching the calendar too and that's what time of year it is, motherfucker. Guess what? So then, also without specification, history.com, an infallible source. <laughs> the, CNN says. The, the, the hard <laughs> scholars that put that aliens guy on TV, okay? <laughs> history.com tells us that the following year, as Jack's time is running out, he meets up with the devil again. And this time, Jack tricks the devil into climbing a tree to get a piece of fruit. And while the devil's up there, Jack carves a cross on the tree. So now the devil can't come out of the tree. How, how are you going to... See, what I don't understand here... So it's a year later. You remember the last time... Hey, remember the last time, dude, you know, talked to you into turning yourself into a coin? Well, like, and you probably <laughs> turned up a second time in Jack's life. Right. Mr. Devil, because it's about time for you to open up some can, okay? Right. Right. And he's just like, well, hold, hold on now, hold on now. You see this tree right here? Why don't yeah. you get up in that tree? Why don't you get up in that tree and get that piece of fruit? Now, I came here. Now, the devil, the lord, the, the immortal lord of all evil, who, let's remember, he's the devil because... He was the first ever created being. Okay, let's be clear here. The <coughs> devil from hell. Yeah, one of the four angels. He is, he was the very first being that God ever created. The angel Lucifer. Right. He was, and still is, in folklore, Lucifer who is the most perfect being in all creation. Because God is outside creation. God is the creator. Right. So Lucifer is the first sentient creature that ever existed in this universe. And he is perfect because he was the first one God ever created. And it is because he is that close to God that he later became the angel who had enough of the force of will to defy God and thus was cast down and his kingdom became the dark mirror image of heaven. And that's, you know, and so that's generally his, his, his status. Yeah. <laughs> and he has existed since before time was counted, you know, in the days of the silver city and heaven. And he has all sorts of supernatural telekinetic <laughs> powers, but he's going to go ahead and physically climb that tree to get that fucking piece of fruit. He knows when he sees a good piece of fruit. <laughs> now, if Jack knows that once the devil is physically on the tree, if I carve a cross into this tree... He can't come down out of there. So the devil didn't see that one coming either, oh, right? Darn it. <laughs> like, like the symbol of the devil's very existence in the universe, okay, the symbol of his purpose, and the devil doesn't see that coming, that, that if I get up there, all you got to do is pull out a buck knife, carve a cross on that tree, no, I didn't know those rules, okay? Like, nobody ever told the devil about his own powers of mobility, I guess, yeah, okay? You're, so, you're the first sentient being. <laughs> right. But that's whatever. I mean, maybe, you know, he fell from heaven and, and there went his IQ, or I don't right. know. Right. Yeah, well, it's got to be a hard yeah. fall. He's yeah. he's still alive. Right. <laughs> so the devil's up in the tree, and the cross is on the bark of the tree, the tree, and the... <laughs> And the devil can't come down. Well, yeah, no, because, because then <laughs> on in terms of physical planes, the devil still has to cross the cross, oh, right? Gotcha. You know, okay. the same yeah. level as the cross. The devil's, you know, the cross is now protecting everything at dick level and below. 
you know, is all hot lava and the devil cannot touch it. He cannot sink oh, back to the earth or even return to his own kingdom because the cross is between him and the ground. That's the idea. Holy shit. So, yeah, this, this you know, number one immortal evil being is up there in the tree and he can't come down until he agrees to not bother Jack for another 10 years. Jack gets a 10-year extension on his lease Holy with the shit. devil. And the devil still cannot collect his soul when he's dead. Well, soon thereafter, sometime within the 10 years, I guess, Jack did actually die. But God would not allow this wily, presumptuous, arrogant, clever piece of shit <laughs> into heaven. I'm not going to have this, 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 this screwy, you know, whatever, trading with the devil into my heaven, not my <laughs> heaven. So God doesn't allow him into heaven. And the devil, the devil is now looking bad because the devil should be looking good because, oh, well, that means he's mine. But the devil agreed to never take his soul. But the devil can't just let this guy walk. So, you know, it's got to be known that the devil put a hurt on him somehow. So, the devil refuses to allow Jack into hell either. He's like, well, you ain't coming here. Oh, okay? shit. I ain't, you ain't coming here and telling anybody how you got shit on me twice, <laughs> motherfucker. Okay, you ain't telling mo those stories around my hey, club. Hey, you want to hear a good story? Yeah, right. Devil loves right, some yeah. fruit. Yeah, <laughs> right. Devil, man. He likes some fruit. He that drinks a lot. <laughs> so the devil, by not allowing Jack into hell, and he can't get into heaven either, Jack is now cursed to wander the earth for all time, as long as they exist. He must wander the earth. And the devil, just for the road, gives him a hot burning coal right in the palm of his hand that he can't drop. And he tells him, go on, get the hell out of here. Yeah. So Jack is walking the earth with the burning coal in his hand to That's light his, fucking, as his crazy. only light in the earth. And Jack put the coal into a carved out turnip to carry it with. And he carved out the, he cored out a turnip and he put the coal in there and that burning coal lights his way in the night. And the Irish began to refer to this wandering legend as Jack of the Lantern and then just Jack O' Lantern because the Irish put O on every goddamn oh, yeah. thing. Oh, right? absolutely. Okay. Patio so, furniture, I was right? thinking the exact same thing. God damn it. So, <laughs> you know, then... Jack, o, Jack of the Lantern becomes a legend in Ireland and Scotland because, as everybody knows, the true definition of a Scotsman is living proof that Irishmen will fuck anybody oh, if they're God. drunk enough. <laughs> so anything that happens in Ireland will get over to Scotland sooner or later. <laughs> so in Ireland and Scotland, people, uh, the Irish and Scottish, started making these turnips. They would core out turnips and, and or potatoes and they did carve, they did actually carve little faces onto the vegetable. And that's how the first baked potato was made. Right. <laughs> and then they put a little candle in, into these uh, turnips and potatoes. And, uh, they, uh, they, and they would put them near their windows and doors to frighten away Stingy Jack. <laughs> and... Uh, among the unexplained here is like exactly how it is that like if Jack's wandering the earth with his lantern and then he sees other people doing it, I'd kind of want a party there. I'd right. be like, oh, wow, <laughs> right, somebody gets it. Oh, that's yeah, cool. cool. But what, I don't know why that would keep him away. But what? Uh, well, it's because know. he never makes it past the jack-o'-lanterns. You got to think, like he's walking around the earth and he's not talking to anybody. So he's got to start talking to the turnip like it's fucking Wilson. You know, <laughs> and then he just walks up to people's porches. He's like, hey, how you guys right. doing? Over there? Either that or he looks at all these porches and they all got these lanterns. He's like, wow, devil fucked you too. Yeah. All right, well, I guess I'll walk on then, you know. And yeah. yeah, I guess I'll just keep walking. And so, uh, so the Irish and Scottish would put these turnips and potatoes 
in their windows and by their doors to protect their door. These were the gargoyles of, of Samhain. Uh, these with the little burning flame in them. And then, of course, the Irish hit the Great Potato Famine. And, and with, they called it the Potato pit Famine because it was that's all they had to eat, right? Well, it, the potato was to the Irish like what like the cow. wheat is to yeah. here, to yeah. us, or yeah. the wheat or the cow. You know, it's just one of their, <coughs> one of their staples. And uh, and uh, so when the Irish diaspora, I might be saying that wrong. Diaspora, diaspora. No, no, Sorry, the fans I don't know. Will let us know. Uh, the <laughs> Irish <laughs> when the Irish emigrated to America, uh, the Irish and Scottish get over here, and they find that turnips and potatoes are not native to this continent. They can be grown here. But it turns out that turnips and potatoes they had been living on were more expensive in oh. America. Whereas the pumpkin, the gourds, and the squashes were native to North America. So at market, pumpkins are just stupidly cheaper than, than turnips <laughs> and potatoes. And so people started using the pumpkins on, on Samhain, on Halloween. Yeah. Stingy, uh, Jack the, you know, stingy Jack strikes again. Stingy Jack comes over. And <laughs> stingy Jack strikes again, man. The pumpkins were cheaper, and, and if you're gonna just cut something up and leave it to rot on your porch, well, then, <laughs> let's save a little coin, man. I mean, those turnips are coming kind of dear in America, so yeah. <laughs> so this was why the pumpkin uh, became uh, the the vegetable of Halloween, and uh, and then. Uh, and I was, it was also cool. The name Jack has always been original. And it was cool, I thought, that people actually carved faces onto the turnips and the potatoes. Because it's like, boy, you core out a turnip or something, and, man, you better have a single iron fucking nail or something that you're carving <laughs> that turnip And how you get that on. candle in there all? <laughs> well, I could see just a little... I mean, you'd take just a little blob of wax or something and put a wick in it, you know, and I, I could see people doing that, but but it's like, you you just, you, you're going to be sitting there like, yeah, you're out on the moors, and it's oh, like, man. it's <laughs> quiet out on the moors, man. I'm just carving this fucking face on this goddamn <laughs> turnip. I mean, you better be growing some cork and turnips, good boy, you know? We had a whole bunch of old and, Irishmen uh, whittling on their front porches doing nothing anyway. Right. <laughs> you know, so it, it was... You know, it was kind of fascinating that uh, I'm sure that once they got to North America and and pumpkins became a more feasible reality, I'm sure they looked at them and they're like, well, God damn, look at all that space, man. Let's just carve these things. You oh, know, man. you got this big canvas to work on now, you know, with the pumpkins. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah. Could I'd you like, imagine what they thought of the first thing whenever they saw a pumpkin? Just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Right, like, like do we uh, eat this? <laughs> right, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the history of the. That'd be interesting. That'd be the next thing I look into is the history of the pumpkin itself. <laughs> that would be a good old uh, harvest show. That's what we're gonna gourds, do next. Man, gourds are gourds are fucking weird. Pumpkins and squash and <laughs> is this stuff. A, is this on your tight five? <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> dude. Like when you think about it, dude. Like, like pumpkins somehow became the most attractive of the gourds, you know, and you look at the others like yellow squash and, and green gourds and orange gourds and you can actually Dude, they all look like when shit like that grows on your body, you get it cut off, <laughs> yeah. man. You know? I mean, yeah, honestly, why do we keep it around? Like, <laughs> like well, it was clearly, you know, who who was the one that was like it's growing off this vine. It's not even a flower, so it doesn't really look pretty the same way. So it's like <laughs> The same way that fruit does, yeah, right? Nature like, so, <laughs> yeah, you know, the fucking green squash or green gourd looks like some kind of warty ass tumor growing on this vine, and they're like, "Well, I wonder if I could eat it." <laughs> you know, like, like I wonder if it would well, kill it came, me. It came from the ground. So. Yeah, I wonder if it would kill me if I ate it. You we know, think there, came, there, there had to be a time that we just walked around eating shit and just hoping for the best. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, and then pumpkins get lucky. Pumpkins get this nice orange color and this big booty <laughs> look to them. You know, and and, and some just, of them look like a mud dog. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah. 
fucking. Uh, but yeah, I like that. Uh, the the jack o' lantern, the pumpkins on your porch, are like one of the 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 cool because I mean if you if you talk about actually having you know flames in vegetables like that, I'm sure that there's cultures that did that before. Right. But the pumpkin on your porch that is one of the oldest and coolest things that the church will never kill. Like, that yeah. will always be a symbol. Oh, yeah, that's always going to be a symbol. And it goes <laughs> all the way back to the darkest forest, man, <laughs> when there was just, there wasn't even fire in there, man. Yeah, you it can was, tell it's an Irish story, though, yeah. too. There's a lot of holes. <laughs> oh, Stingy Jack. You know, the, the shit with the devil. Well, you know, the other uh, the other author I, I absolutely love is uh, Bill Willingham, and he's the guy who did the graphic novel series Fables, and then he also did the graphic novel series Jack of Fables. And in Bill's universe, Jack, the character Jack, is the same Jack from every story you've ever heard. Jack the Giant Killer, Jack Frost, Jack the Lantern, Jack, you know, Jack. Uh, it's all, over the it's all just stick. one, one It's day. all this guy. I had Jack, this crazy job. I had to use to jump over this candlestick. Right. Weird motherfucker. Right. <laughs> So Jack, in, in Bill Williams' Fables universe, the stories that we know and the characters that are in them, they have physical forms and they exist as sentient beings who can live and die. Now, they are, they are immortal unless they are killed because they exist because they are the stories that we carry with us. All the Disney shit, all the Brothers right. Grimm shit, the the Land of Oz, the the Arabian fables, oh, Aladdin. Yeah, they, they all they're those. all adaptations. Everything from fiction exists as a creature, as a person, you know. Or some of them are animal fables that the cow jumped over the moon, the right. talking animals, you know, Cock Robin and the three blind mice. And <laughs> they're they're all real. Cinderella, they used to cut off each other's toes. And, and uh, well, yeah, Cinderella and her sisters, and and which uh, we're going to talk about cutting and, off toes in our next show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. good segue. <laughs> and uh, Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, and and uh, all of them, they're all real. And Jack is is a character that has that has been the guy in all those different Jack stories. Okay, that's crazy. And he got his own spinoff series, and. Uh, so, oh, and I totally forgot what made me think of him now. And that's the <laughs> Jack, fucking... <laughs> Jack Lantern. He had, you know, he and, so, and, uh, and uh, so, yeah, Jack is, uh, uh, Bill's got one or two stories of him, like, tricking, tricking death or tricking the devil. And, and those have always been my favorite stories, like the one with, you know, the he goes by different names, but it's it's the Jack character. It's the oh, trickster man. who like sits down with the devil and and I'm like Hey man, a long time. <laughs> why would I this is like, dude, when you get right down to think about it, no matter how much people believed in the devil being able to do this, why would you be scared of this? <laughs> This fuck nut wandering the country <laughs> who is outwitted by this simple demonstrational ritual <laughs> logic, right? Like, I did this, so you got to do this now. <laughs> it's like, if you know that works, it's like it's like Donald fucking Trump roaming oh the land, God. stealing people's souls. It's uh, like, oh, my God. You know he's the worst thing that's ever existed, and he will that's eat, great, that, he will that eat you alive. Knowledge. But it's like... We can't get too political. Yeah, <laughs> but everybody... Yeah, but everybody... At the same time, everybody talks about the charms that will drive him away, yeah. right? Like if Donald Trump shows up on your porch, all you got to do is say this, and he goes away, or he can't come in. It's like, so why am I afraid of the devil? He's a fucking idiot. It's, but I love the stories because I love the details, and I love the. It's all about the settings with these stories. Oh, yeah, it's man. in a swamp, or you know, Jack. Uh, convinces death to get into a magic bag that he can't come out of, you know, and, and it's... How easily it's, susceptible it's, is death? I, right, I, I, right. I mean... Well, it, now you got to figure in that story that I read with death, when the Grim Reaper 
Jack, first of all, can see death and knows that he's there because Jack is a fable and Jack, you know, has these powers. You know, but like I said, like Jack got into lots of adventures and, and fables can be, you, you, they will bleed when you cut them and you can cut their, you can cut off the head of a fable and they will die. But like Goldilocks, for instance, Goldilocks is an anti-establishment Marxist Che Guevara oh communist my God. in this, Val Val in this you, you know, no, and yeah, no. like Goldilocks <laughs> and she's fucking baby bear. Okay. From oh, the, what? yeah, Goldilocks is like, she, I can see that happening. She's fucking baby bear and she's against the establishment and she gets killed a lot. Lots of bad things happen to her. But when Goldilocks dies, like a fable, depending on how well we know their story and how popular they are, a fable will regenerate. They're like the ultimate Wolverine. You can ruin their day by, by killing them, you know, and they will have to take time to regenerate. But like the big bad wolf in fables is like like Wolverine wishes he was that bad like you it is almost impossible to hurt the big bad wolf oh man you know in in this universe and, you know yeah he's <laughs> like he's like one of the most powerful fables you know and stuff like that so so Jack the Jack character uh, he's he's the American trickster he's the American Loki or a Nazi or you know coyote well the Native Americans had coyote and yeah. also grandmother spider, but uh, that's actually uh, something we want to get in on. But Jack too. is the Jack is the 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 twentieth century. It, well, as far as America ever existed, Jack is the American trickster. He is you know the yeah the, one of the first from American folklore. Stories, you know yeah. he's he's the one that's come from everywhere and he's been everywhere. And I'm collecting that series, but but yeah. So anyway, the. Uh, yeah, we had uh, definitely check out Joe R. Lansdale because he, <laughs> his books are amazing. I mean, at least the ones that I've read. The weird, I like his weird stuff. I like his, uh, you know, I mean, anything with Elvis Presley and, and a bunch of other people, and they're the Scooby-Doo gang, man. It's like, well, that's going to be great. Well, man, you know, like right now, I know that we're running out of time, but I still wanted to talk about how um, we're still going to be keeping in contact with you on later episodes. Um, but you got a little adventure that you're going for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my my wife and I have the opportunity uh, to live out of hotels and just work on the road, get sent around, work in, in different cities. So yeah, man. Someone who, she's would been saying that's the American dream. Yeah, she's been doing this for a while, and it's it's she yeah, she's absolutely in love with this. Uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, that uh, she gets to see the coolest places in America. I remember she was up in the Pacific Northwest for a while once, and I drove her car out there to her. And while I was out there, we went driving through this, uh, uh, the Oneonta, the Oneonta Canyon, the Oneonta River Gorge in Oregon. We were driving through this national forest, and there's all these waterfalls that feed into the river and everything and it's gorgeous and whatever and it was awesome and then like six months later the wildfires hit in the west that year this was 2017 and and the wildfires started tearing through the west and she she was still working up there and she she was driving along that road and she stopped on this road that we had been on and she took a picture of that exact same national forest from oh, across shit. the river. And it was like, it was literally like fucking Mordor. There was nothing but fire That's everywhere. Crazy. And that whole forest was gone, man. And, and I was like, I totally need to be doing this. And... She and I, uh, and that's not a bad uh, thing too. No, let's uh, new for, or no, that was all natural. Vegetation. It was natural wildfire. Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen, and uh, but now Haley and I uh, have been together for I think like twenty. Next year it'll be twenty five years since I met her and we first got together, and we've been. We've been dating on and off all that time. Like, we'll just come back together for a while, and then, you know, we knew That's other awesome. people and whatever. And, and uh, so 
So we've been we've been running around the country together, you know, parts of it for a while, and uh, yeah, we always used to joke. We said, "What we really need to do is find somebody who will pay us to just tool the fuck around like this right. and see whatever the hell we want." <laughs> And so now she's kind of done exactly that. So uh, um, I was supposed to be I was supposed to be gone this spring earlier, but then uh, uh, you know family kind of came up, and and then Nahele's car died in Texas, like so many of the best things in life. You know, I mean, went to Texas to die. Oh, wow. Uh, and I think it's yeah. still there. My dad would agree with you. Her car is yeah. still there. Um, so, yeah, now it's just a matter of i got to get my hands on wheels, you know. I, you know. We get a good vehicle, and I'm wheels up. I am out. Well, man, you know, I, hope, and, I hope you're still around by the time that we do the uh, our next episode, which we're not going to we're not gonna really talk too much about that one. But we got a really interesting uh, uh, subject coming up on a man of... Uh, complete world badassery, um, but we'll talk more about that later. Yeah, right. right um, man. Brooke, I want to thank you very much for joining us on this adventure, and uh, I'm really, I really want to thank you for sharing your adventures with us right so that on. way we can actually broadcast. Yeah, this. I'm headed out. Um, I'm, as soon as I can, I'm going to go find some weirdness, man. I'll come back and we'll, yeah, yeah, we'll have some yarns. Oh man, definitely. Well, we'll definitely also we'll, we want you back here in the studio, but we also uh, are going to be doing remote uh, shows while uh, Rook is out on the road, if if possible. But uh, again, I want to thank you for coming out here, and we're going to be going back to me and Christian in the studio. Thank you, man. Right on, dude. Yeah, always a pleasure. And well, fuck, dude, I've known you for almost damn. Well over 10 years. Yeah, because uh, like you years. probably, you and I probably started hanging out like, I don't know, what's the first thing you remember me doing? Uh, you were, oh shit. Like the oldest You were with, you were with uh, Bird. You were with your little beanie. Okay, so that was the Inquisitor. So, uh, so that was around 2006, right around then when I started doing that, so... Around 2000, uh, uh, it was 2004, 2005, actually. 2004 or five, yeah, because yeah, I did that for a few years. But uh, uh, so yeah, it was it was uh, yeah, it was back there. I started in 2001, and my first year, like I just wore villager garb. Yeah, and I was I was like a ward of the church. I was just like you know in the holy guild, you know, and and uh, and then the first thing I did was I was Bird's holy guard. I was one of his holy guards. I had a uniform, and and uh, and then after that, Doug Glenn told me uh, he wanted me to do uh, this Nicholas Morin. He was a, the Royal Inquisitor. You know, he was oh, like, shit. "We need an Inquisitor." You know, we need, we need one of those guys that you know, <laughs> one of those holy roller guys that's you know that tortures people and shit. You know, Torquemada. I just remember shit. when I first looked at you. I'm just like, these guys <laughs> look like Satan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really too bad. I I put up a, an album of vintage fair, all my pictures from yeah, fair. I saw that, and I didn't have any pictures of me and Bird in that garb together on fair. Like, I saw somebody else I, post some. I had uh, oh really? I'll have to find him because I have a picture of Bird and I at Archon when we were in Masquerade and we were wearing our cardinal garb, but he was Cardinal Vader. And he had a Vader mask, yeah. and uh, I was the Inquisitor. But, uh, but yeah. But yeah, man. Again, I want to thank you for coming out. Yeah, right on, man. Yeah, yeah it's cool. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, there you have it. <coughs> that was episode 01 in the bag. Uh, our pilot, our Halloween special, our pilot Halloween special. Down. We can go one per one right now. One for one. One for one. Okay. Fucking A, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed uh, what you guys heard with Rook. Uh, fantastic. Um, 
it's 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 great to have uh, the guests that we that we're able to get on here, and he's definitely my fucking number one favorite. We will say that Rook is one in a million. It, Rook is definitely he is definitely one, in a, one million. in a million. One in a million. Oh my god! Yeah, there's only so many of those guys that are out there. We feel, <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I feel so. I I can honestly say I can feel blessed that I know this guy. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, guys. I want to thank you all for listening. If you made it this far, you you definitely fucking get a tally for our fucking checkbook or our checklist here. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sorry, maybe not our checkbook, no checkbook because no, our checkbooks you... are ba- paper thin because we're yeah. trying to run this on our own. Yep. Um, any way that you guys can go off and support us, and we're talking not talking about financial support or anything. We're just talking about give us a like, give us a share, spread <coughs> spread the word out there a little bit. You know, spread it like peanut butter. Get them nuts gone. Yeah. Get them nuts out. Get, we, we will keep pipes. everybody posted on our um, our upcoming uh, social medias. Um, I think here soon we're going to have an Instagram, a Facebook. We, we're going to have a Facebook. We have an Instagram. Um, we're going to probably wind up having to fucking give into Twitter. Tw- Twitter, yeah. Yeah, and that, um, basically I guess that's probably all, we, all we'll have until uh, we can figure out some way to bring this to you in the yeah. best way possible. Because right and, now... <clears throat> and we're... Um, we're we're definitely on track to have a Patreon here soon. Um, we I have to say personally, I enjoy putting out content. I enjoy I love doing this for everybody. I know this is the first time, but being as an entertainer, and I have been Casey and I for the our relationship that what we have known each other. It's been consistent entertaining people. Oh, absolutely. And, and we, we want <coughs> to be able to do this the best way possible for all of you. And we're doing all of this with with whatever we possibly exactly. have available and, to and, us. And I have a lot I have a family. And as Casey do I. and Casey and has a family. As scary as that may sound yeah. to you guys, yeah. we actually have yeah. children. And uh, <laughs> you know, we, we both get up very early in the morning and we work quite a bit and you know, we are not going to stop Absolutely. doing this. You Absolutely. Know, if it if it bankrupts us, this is this is what we want to do. This, this is, is our this uh, is our our, if our you guys, therapy. That's this, right. That's yeah. right. This is so that way we don't wind up <laughs> like the people that are uh, parts of this of, of our podcast, the people um, that we cover. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's why we're saying if you guys can give us a like, give us a share, uh, tell your friends about us if you if you if you think that they would be interested in it. Um, we are literally at your mercy and your beck and call. Absolutely. Also, if you guys can get a hold of us, you can you can even email me at my private email at caseyross88 at gmail.com. We will take any kind of criticism. We'll take any kind of uh, ideas if you want to share them. If you guys just want to make a shout out for the for the uh, show, of course we will. Um, but if there's anything that we can do for you. That's what we're here for. This is what we love to do, and we're going to be doing it whether you like it or not. If you don't like us, well, you don't have to listen to us, but go ahead and give us a like on the way out. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> in, in, in any shout-out that comes over our social media, if you send us a message um, and you want to be, you know, just shout-out over, over, over our podcast, you know. Absolutely. Or any any kind of statement, or you got any cool stories, or if that you, you know about what more about the topics that we cover that we haven't already covered. Then yeah, go ahead. Let us know. Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> just let us know, and, and we will filter whether you're going to be on the podcast or not. No, 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 no. We always want your guys' voices to be heard, and that's the most important thing. Because we're—that's the whole—that's that's our whole goal here. Is we absolutely. Want, we want our voices to be heard, no matter what. It just happens to be about the weirdest fucking shit that we can yep. find. Yep. Uh, so, <laughs> on that note, guys, thank you. For everybody Yay. here, Whoa. Yes, thank you, you were for here listening. for episode one. You can honestly say that, man, I was here from the beginning. I saw those guys from the bottom. I was here at Ground Zero, bro. Ground Zero. Ground Zero. It was 1992 bro. in Seattle, fucking Washington, oh. Oregon. All right. Well, <coughs> this episode was brought to you by the vegetable asparagus. The people over at asparagus want you to know that we still exist, and we fuck with your pee. So when you want your pee fucked with, always come to asparagus.